Welcome to season two! Ooh. Ooh. The cameras are sized correctly. We will see how long that lasts. I have not had a oh, chance to fix yet. everything yet. Hey, I was saying we'll see how long. That wasn't a jinx. We have a new intro screen. We have a new interface here. Tons of new stuff. Lots of exciting things this episode. Oh my god, we look so cool. I'm looking at the stream right now. Yeah, yeah. I gave you <laughs> all like the individual sick. little color things. And then the, the big screen is like matching the, the little rainbow black hole. I promised you a lot more like things, especially with world building in season two. And as you will see in like two minutes, mm -hmm. I definitely delivered. Uh, actually, you guys, the players, have all, yeah. the players have all seen what I'm talking about, but all the uh, all yeah. the viewers will see. Also, my lighting is really bad. I'll, I'll, maybe if I do turn that down, it'll fix it a little bit. I'm really excited about season two. I got a whole new a whole new book for it. Like just a couple days ago, I picked up Mythic Odyssey of Theros for more like god based encounters and stuff. We're using our original characters, not the characters from this, but. Good inspiration. It will be fun. I'm seeing lots of people excited in chat. Oh, right. I got to turn off my channel point rewards because those don't apply here. Uh, but then we'll just go ahead and jump in because there's, you know, a lot of, a lot of recap intro stuff. As promised, you can watch this without watching season one. So we'll go through a little bit of, uh, of yeah. world knowledge for that point. But uh, speaking of world knowledge, uh, I got a thing to show off. Now this is, I think, going to be extra exciting for people who watch season one. It's it's cool for new people as well. I welcome everyone new to the to the season two premiere. But this is something that you know I took long enough to get. So everybody, uh, please behold the world map for the campaign setting. Freaking finally, I have made a full map of Vontral. Now obviously, uh, most of season one took place in this central so city of Riftreach. But there's a lot more around here, and you will see... I, I can guarantee that you will see at least two other cities uh, from this from this world in this first episode. Possibly more, depending on uh, what exactly the players decide to do. But we will come back to that in a Wait, bit. Wait, Matt, I have a question what, for you. What's your question? So where did we start off the campaign? Like, season oh, one, episode one. I, where was that I put on it, the map? Uh, I put it on there. Let me pull this back up. Uh, so as you can see, most of what is on the map here is the like major city-states of Vontral, which is the world. There are villages scattered throughout this area, but for the sake of not cluttering the map, I didn't put you know all the random tiny villages on unless they matter. If any matter, I will add them to the map. But on the uh, on the right-hand side, you can see that I did mark Lauderton there. It's kind of like you know, sort of in the center of the right-hand side of the continent. So that is Lauderton or Slaughterton. Well, I was looking for Slaughterton. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm looking for an S. My Where the fuck is oh, pun there. name is there. Yeah, you'll notice a couple names that are different than the others. Uh, you will see Franklin's here. Franklin, home of the infamous Franklin Castle. So that might be making a reappearance <laughs> in season two. Lots of exciting things on this map. Someone asked, "Is Vontral the name of the whole uh, of the planet or the continent or both?" And as sort of some reveals at the end of season one showed, it is sort of both, and we will go over that uh, what that means in a bit. So. Yeah, yeah. World is flat. World is a uh, world is Platform. a very weird sort of world in quotes, which is why the biomes are all shaky. Everything was made intentionally on my part. Haha. -ha. I just get to <laughs> say whatever I want. I'm the DM. So, is everybody ready to go? I'll do a little recap of what happened in season one, and then we'll get into introducing For all sure. the characters and everything. Sweet. I hope everybody is excited. I'm seeing some people in chat say they'd never actually seen D and D before. Don't worry. This is campaign is is designed to be an acceptable intro, you know, things like that. Panda, this is technically Panda. You can say now that you, this is your second campaign. You have completed a campaign Ooh. now. Ooh. Uh, all right. I've done a whole yeah. So I'll, I'll you know I'll pull up the map for this. That's it's exciting and I want to show it off a lot. So welcome everybody to the world of Vontral. As season one veterans will know, most of the first season, like I said, took place in the central city of Riftreach. Now. Rift Reach is so named because it exists over a massive ravine in the earth that was torn open centuries ago by the conflict of two dimensions basically crashing into each other as they were ripped open by some very arrogant wizards who uh, wanted to get some power that they, you know, didn't really have a handle on. Now, in that cataclysm, a lot of very bad things happened, but two of said ancient wizards were sucked into the clashing dimensions, one into the realm of order and one into the realm of chaos. Several hundred years later, a rogue goblin 
messing around where he should not be, ended up opening one of those portals again and letting some bad stuff through. At which point, it turned to uh, three adventurers, none of whom knew each other and none of whom were particularly qualified to handle the problem, but hey, they were who were around to journey into these other dimensions, meet the old wizards who had themselves become gods in their time away from the home world, uh, and basically stop everything from descending into madness. Now, there were two primary gods that they met last season. One was a giant body horror centipede man by the name of Polnaros. Polnaros was met earlier than even I was expecting. He was met in like episode three, I believe, because you guys got really unlucky uh, and Momo got herself sent to another dimension by licking a magical crystal. Uh, Polnaros, it looked like a salt lamp. It, the crystal looked like a salt lamp. <laughs> Uh, now, as I said, Polnaros is a giant body horror centipede man. He was pretty well set up to be the uh, main villain of the campaign. However, it turns out that he was actually not really a monster and was a fairly nice, normal man by the name of Prophis, who had had his body and memories twisted by 700 years in the Chaos Realm. The real villain turned out to be the other wizard who had gotten stuck in the Order Realm, and by being there for so long... His mind had become corrupted, and he believed that he was, you know, the one who had to bring order to the main world by conquering the entire thing. The players unintentionally released him, but managed to fix their mistake with the help of the Chaos God, killing Aldor, the Order God. And, you know, well, not really restoring order, since the Order God was killed, but, you know, restoring peace and not having the world getting conquered by, by flying robot monsters. So that's pretty good. Uh, however... In the process of this dimension-hopping adventure, some interesting artifacts were discovered, largely by Canyon, who was Nikhil Clayton's character, who unfortunately was not able to join us as a regular character for Season 2. Uh, Canyon got stuck in the Chaos Realm on one of his adventures, but sort of managed to figure out a way to hop from realm to realm, discovering that there were actually eight different dimensions, all orbiting the center. Uh, these dimensions were pairs of four opposites. There was order and chaos, life and death, earth and air, and fire and water. And all of them sort of combined at their center to create the world that you know as Vontral. The world of Vontral is sort of an Asgard-like plane floating in space, somehow, no one really knows how yet, made out of energies from all these other dimensions. Uh, and in each of these dimensions, somewhere, no one really knows exactly where again, sits a throne, and by sitting on these thrones, one is imbued with all the powers of that dimension becoming a god. Obviously a, a set of very powerful artifacts, those things, with you know lots, lots of mystery still surrounding them that may be revealed soon, who knows? I know, none of you guys do. Uh, however, those were not the prime worry for a while after Aldor was destroyed. Everything seemed to be going okay, uh, until Glib. Glib is uh, Panda Red's character, of course. He was a uh, Kraken Warlock. Kra his Kraken Warlock patron, of course, was the God of Water. And after all of the events of Season 1 in a Marvel movie-style end scene, uh, Glib's patron was murdered by an unknown entity. So uh, something is going around killing gods. No one really knows what. No one really knows how. And that is sort of where we've left off. So, we will pick up about a week after the events of Season 1. Uh, you know, the, uh, the leaders of Riftreach, the main city, currently are Callisto, a powerful wizard who was the one that remained in the main realm, and Prophis, the aforementioned centipede man who is now looking much more normal and is, you know, doing more human duties, trying to fix some of the chaos he that he guards. Yeah, he, he got better. <laughs> he can still turn into a centipede if he wants, presumably, but, you know, he's, uh, <laughs> he's got some control over all of it. Now, there is a lot to manage in the aftermath of the uh, the Symmetry War, as it were. Uh, during this, you know, there were robots overtaking the Fantasy City. There was a battle between a Megazord and a Kaiju happening. Large parts of the, you know, New York City-sized area were largely destroyed. And so while these, these godly thrones are a, uh, a definite problem, Riftreach is also going uh, also has a lot of problems happening at the moment as i said large sections of the city are destroyed the law enforcement organization known as the symmetrist brotherhood has been shattered and the combination of bad infrastructure and no law enforcement is not making rift reach a very good place right now so 
uh, what Callisto and Prophets have decided is basically they have sent the players essentially on an all expenses paid vacation as thanks for their uh, thanks for their help in the whole event as the two get as much of the problems with Rift Reach sorted as they can with a promise that they will call them again when they are needed. So we will first go to SG. Momo, describe your character. And I will pull up your character card here as you do so. So my character is SG. It stands for some guy, I guess. Uh, SG is a changeling from small town in the middle of nowhere. It doesn't really matter. Um, but there, the background for SG is a little bit confusing. So it's a bunch of tiny stuff that does not actually make sense, but we just pretend it makes sense. So she kind of started her own bloodline, um, and now is it kind of created all of psychics. Yeah, and time, time it, travel stuff will be explained more in season two. Don't feel a need to explain it if you don't want to. Yeah. That's the DMs. That's my fault for forcing yeah. it on everybody. It'll make sense, I promise. And they just kind of like to go around and gaslight people into thinking their lives are fake because it's fun. Also wanted for no murders and has committed a handful of murders. Um, but friend, I want to point out that nobody in this nobody in this campaign is a good person. That is also a, that is also a good note. I believe I described you all in my little intro video. I I did say that Momo's whole thing was gaslighting people. Uh, Glib oh, yes. is the unluckiest being in the world, and then I believe I described Goodbit as the classiest contract killer you'll ever meet. Facts. They're not great, Facts. but they're, as I said at the beginning, they're not the best, but they're who was around. That's <laughs> Guardians right. of the yeah. Galaxy S type situation. SG is, is kind of trapped in, not really trapped, kind of just wearing some demon armor that uh, they can't take off, but they are kind of okay with it because they now get to talk to a sort of uh, moss monster pet called Kermit. Um, but the issue is that we don't know what happens. Um, also, there, there was a big issue in season one where I kind of failed every single stealth check and dex save because of this armor, but yes. I still don't take it off because I now have AC of 18. Um, and yes, that is all for SG. Perfect. Now I'm actually going to toss it back to the map. I told you I'd be showing this off a billion times this session, and that was definitely true. Now, where SG has chosen for her vacation is somewhere very practical. Wanting to learn how to handle this armor that she is now stuck in, because, you know, ultimately it is still helpful to her, and did probably save her in the boss battle of season one, the final boss. <laughs> she has chosen to go to the city of Parian. You can see Parian. On the, uh, again, on the east coast, sort of, northeast coast. Now, Parian, for anyone who wants to visualize, has very Greco-Roman architecture for reasons you'll understand in a minute. Parian is sort of underwhelming for most of the year. It's a big city. It's got a lot of stuff in it. It's very nice. There's a lot of people there. But there's no real reason to go visit 11 months out of the year. Because in the late spring, Parian hosts something called the Victora Festival, which is a giant month-long party that is basically sort of like a combination of Carnival and the Olympics. And because of this, Parian is home to some of the best gladiators and fighters and athletes in the world. And thus, Momo has decided to go there to learn how to train with heavy armor. Uh, and so we will we will resume her journey sort of around the end of the, uh, the week-long vacation period, as she has pretty much mastered her heavy armor, which, you know, as a changeling, she was not incredibly used to. Uh, SG is, is chilling in her assigned quarters when she hears a knock at the door. You were not expecting anyone, I should note, but you just hear someone getting your attention in your room. Yes, who is it? Uh, the knock kind of just continues. You don't really... It, it, there's no voice. It seems to be waiting for you to <laughs> open the door. Uh, explain yourself. Or maybe you cannot speak. I understand. And I open the door. Uh, you open the door and immediately have to look up uh, as the figure standing in front of you is a tall and just ridiculously jacked man, like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 1 level muscular, decked out in full gladiator garb. Uh, you Hold on. <laughs> we know what we gotta do. Okay, yeah. We know what we gotta uh, do. <laughs> actually, actually uh, I know you're gonna roll for hotness. Because of things that I know and you don't, uh, he, like, auto gets a 20. 
Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Once again, because of things I know and you don't, he is giant, giant handsome, man. super jacked gladiator guy. Now, you actually <laughs> already know who this guy is because he's a, a decently popular figure in Parian. But uh, as you sort of get the idea, this is his, kind of his whole thing. He introduces himself anyway, despite knowing that you you know who he is. He goes, ah, ah, SG, is it? Yes, I'm sure you already know who I am, but I'll introduce myself anyway, just in case. I am Dramaticus, four-time champion of the Victoria Festival. And he holds out his hand for you to shake. <laughs> Instantly, so much less hot. Anyway. <laughs> yes, you I just know dropped you are. so many and... fucking rings on my scale, man. <laughs> <laughs> What? You don't like I go dramatic to shake his hand. Can I do a strength check to see if I can like cr like I'm sure he's you're going trying to, make to you're trying to crush hand. his hand. All right, sure. I want to give like the firmest handshake. Okay, so you give a, a firm hand. I'll actually I'll strength check for him too. Hold on, let me get my dice oh. out. I feel like he's gonna respond to you with a. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I ah! say that? I never no! used this voice yeah. in season one, so I had to pull it out sometime. <laughs> I have a negative one to strength. Why would I do this? Yeah, uh, yeah. The super jack bloody is definitely, uh, definitely gonna lose to you there. All right, and that is honestly that's a seventeen. Seventeen is pretty good, actually. <laughs> wow. Oh wow! Funny enough, he also got a seventeen before bonuses. Uh, so you ah. actually give this man a firm handshake. You can still tell that he's much stronger than you. But he seems impressed. Uh, he goes, ah, ah, ah. so they didn't, uh, they didn't lie about your strength. You've really improved with that thing. And he kind of gestures to your, your general suit of armor. Yes, I have. Um, I really like armor. Do you like armor too? You seem to be very big. It must be difficult to find such armor. Maybe we can shop together one time for, you know, armor and such. Uh, he you know, he kind of nods at that. Again, he's wearing, like, his gladiator armor, but it seems to be, like... How do I put this? It seems to be more ceremonial armor that is designed more to show off his physique rather than actually, you know, do anything practical, which I don't think surprises anybody. It's the it's the female armor in RPGs joke, but a dude, basically. Uh, he kind of does look like a douchebag, but, you know, you get that vibe from him. All right, all right hold on. Are we talking, like... Hercules from Marvel Comics level armor, where that's, it's like that's perfect. Is technically yeah, that's perfect. That, okay. that kind of like a uh, yeah, that's that's perfect. Like a gladiator version of of comics Hercules. Gotcha. So just basically straps. He's basically straps tits out. Just exactly. Fucking, this blocks nothing. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Nailed it. Got it. Uh, you know, he he laughs again, does his sort of signature thing. Goes, oh, I'll have to take you up on that offer sometime. But I actually come here with another proposition for you. It, do you want to like like fight? Do you want to battle with me? <laughs> of course! What else would I be here for? As you know, the festival starts in around two days. I was hoping we could have an exhibition match. Okay, what do I get if I win? Uh, he pauses. Clearly, he hadn't thought that far ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's kind of like, well, uh, what would you be interested in if uh, if this comes to pass? I would like to... Do you have any pets? Uh, I, I do not have any pets. I'm, I'm sorry. Is that relevant to the situation? Yes. I, well, I don't have any. Well, that's unfortunate for you. You should find. You should really think about getting one. They're excellent company. But in that case, I would like to be able to call on you for a favor. Uh, a favor? Yes, of, of course. That, that's... Reasonable enough, and <laughs> let's be honest, who wouldn't want a favor from me? <laughs> well, if you could just sign... I, I just had Canon SG having, like, a bunch of blank contracts I, from yeah, She Good stole Bid. from Goodbid, probably, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. She learned something. If wow. you could just sign these contracts, seeing that you will answer favor no matter what. Also, read here in very tiny print, it does say no loopholes. And you will not be able to see a lawyer before signing because I would need you to sign right now. Is that okay with you? Uh, he takes it and like kind of like puts the pen to the paper and then looks up and goes, "You said favor, no matter what. This is conditional upon you losing. Yes, this is conditional. If I win, uh, you have to do basically a favor for me, and you cannot say no." Uh, I mean, he signs it. He's <laughs> 
<laughs> he's a he's quite a cocky guy as should be immediately obvious uh, he kind of he pauses for like a brief second and you see like a little flash of like maybe should i do this crossing over his eyes and then it's immediately just replaced with like full face confidence again and by the way it doesn't seem fake he's actually like this uh at which point you know he he <laughs> signs it with a flourish he signs it with the flourish of a man very used to giving autographs and hands it back to you mm. All right, thank you. I will be sending this to my lawyer. <laughs> Great. Is that good, Ben? Oh, yeah, that's I mean, yeah, no, good. I feel like good lawyer. Is lawyer. That, yeah, okay. Good bit is my lawyer. I have no idea that it's actually a lawyer. I mean, that's that's you know reasonable enough. Good bit being your lawyer. I mean, good yeah. bit dresses like one, so I just assumed he was a lawyer. He's got contracts in his bag. He's probably more contracts. qualified than than anybody. I need we need a homebrew a law stat. <laughs> See who's good at knowing <laughs> law. It's like in Pathfinder where they have different types of intelligence. Just legal intelligence is going to be a new stat you can spec into. Oh, uh, anyway, Dramatic you know, upon signing the contract, he's like, well, I'm looking forward to your match. I'm curious to see what you can do. I've heard many tales about your prowess on the field of battle. Okay. I, I think that is a, a wonderful idea. <clears throat> and as he turns to, to walk away, can I true strike him? Uh, oh, you want to find out what his Are weakness is? Are you going to sucker punch the no, motherfucker? No, True Strike is, I mean, true strike. True strike is Wait, finding out his that? weakness. Isn't that... I need to find his weakness. Oh, right, okay. This All could right, actually sorry. be really funny. <laughs> so, sure. So, I just, like, basically, like, finger gun him, and I do shoot him in his butt cheek. Okay, remind me exactly what True Strike does. Like, like read, read okay. me the spell. It says, um, I think it's a cantrip. Yes, it's a cantrip. I extend your hand and point a finger at a target. In range, um, your magic grants you a brief insight into the target's defenses. On your next turn, you gain advantage, but... Oh, yeah, on my next turn, I, okay. I gain advantage on your first attack roll against the target. So, provided the spell hasn't ended. It does last for... It's a concentration spell for one round. Okay, my question... So I won't, get, I won't be able to get um, any advantage, but I will be able to know his... Um, his defense. So, Mike, you don't have to roll for that. Uh, no. I'm actually going to say roll for it. Roll for it using whatever your spellcasting ah. modifier is. Um, spellcasting modifier. Let me double check. I don't know what off the top of my head. That is... All right. This is a plus five. I get a plus, plus five. five? All right. If you, this roll could could change a lot of things, so we'll see what you get here. Nat 20! Really? Oh no God. way, you actually got nat a nat 20. 20. That is, I was gonna say this only happens if you get a nat 20. Okay. Oh Once again, God. Momo pushes a reveal like two episodes forward. Uh, so, not yeah, yeah. You have done what literally nobody else in four years of this man being a gladiator have been able to do. That's hilarious to start this off. Okay, so you true strike... This you true strike him. Something is very wrong about Dramaticus. Like, you you true strike him kind of trying to gain riches. The weaknesses and, like, the energy that comes from him is t entirely different than what you would expect. So different, in fact, that, like, you can't even process it at first. Oh. Oh, no. I don't think I will win this battle. <sighs> All right. Well, that... Uh, would I, I be able to just, like... Oh, I'm going to do ascending to... Fuck. Who do I think could be able... You know what? I was, I was going to say, well, you can do an arcana <laughs> check to try and like parse out what, okay. has, what is happening with, with yeah, Dramaticus. Yeah, I'm going to arcana check okay. this. And I... All right, this is a flat roll. I have nothing to arcana. Um, that's a 17. 17 is, is actually very good. Uh, yeah, I will go ahead and say, what you can get off Dramaticus, as it, again, you, you true strike him... And you feel, you know, you kind of get an idea of, like, what you're expecting his weaknesses to be. Like, maybe, you know, something that you would expect from a, a gladiator. And it is not that at all. What you get is a very magical signature, more than you were expecting. And the signatures seem more consistent with illusion magic than anything else. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Let me think on that. I and if, am... if you're thinking on that, 
uh, we may as well cut over to one of the other players because that's actually a yeah, sort of perfect sure. hook. That that leads <laughs> perfectly into what I was setting up for later. That's even better than I was I'm expecting. I'm gonna go get lead for my pencil. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you go get you go get pencil lead and uh, get your get your notes ready on Dramaticus. Uh, so let's cut over to the aforementioned quote unquote lawyer, Mr. Goodbid. Now, uh, Mr. Goodbid did not you know have a, a practical purpose for his vacation other than. He just wanted a vacation. I specifically, t I'm not assuming, by the way, I texted all the players earlier today and I was like, what are you guys doing with your week off? Uh, and Goodbid <laughs> is taking a tropical vacation. So let me pull up the world map again. The best place in Vontral to get a tropical vacation is the northern city of Wainua. Wainua is the city of the Mer people, and it is built on the coast, on the coast in the most literal way possible, as in, not, like, you know, not in front of a beach. The city starts on the beach and makes a transition under the water seamlessly so that half of the city is above ground and then half of it is Atlantis-style underwater. Uh, given its, you know, very nice climate and very yeah. unique structure, uh, it is a popular tourist destination and is the primary city of the Mer people, at least, you know, the one that land dwellers can interact with. Now, Goodbit actually has a connection there in the form of a new character who was introduced in the finale, Captain Mercury. Now, I have a, I do have a little treat for everybody. Uh, this is not 100% finished yet. It is the design. Uh, it's not the final, like, polished official artwork, but it is the concept sketch. I didn't want to make people wait, so I just took, like, two minutes, slapped it onto a gradient background. We do officially now have art of Captain Mercury, who, if you were curious what he looks like, here he is. He is a uh, mermaid pirate captain uh. that uses these large prosthetic legs strapped to his body to walk around. Uh, now, interestingly, despite being a mermaid and the captain of a pirate ship, which we'll get to in a second, Captain Mercury somehow appears to be the new god of air. You don't know all the exact details on how this happened, but he, you know, you fa he found the air throne in the air dimension somehow. Uh, and it not only affected him with some sort of air powers, it also affected his ship. Formerly known as the uh, the Sea Skimmer, it is now known as the Sky Skimmer, and it is a Peter Pan-style flying pirate ship that seems to have some sort of sentience. Uh, him, uh, the ship, and Mercury can communicate in some capacity, and he he treats it like an old friend. Now, uh, Goodbid and Mer really the entire party hit it off with Mercury pretty quick, uh, and so. Goodbid, you know, when Goodbid decided to take a vacation, Mercury was the one that took him, but Mercury has been dealing with a lot of stuff in his, you know, week because he recently got God powers. He's trying to figure that stuff out. So we will we will zoom into Goodbid's story as the two of them, we'll say they're together, are chilling on one of the many beaches in Wainua. Uh, you know, good. Uh, so yeah, Nathan, describe your character. I'll pull up the character card. Uh, howdy, y'all. My name's Mr. Goodbid, because I only be conducting good business. It's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, Goodbid is a College of Lore bard. Um, and he is a established and renowned bounty hunter. Uh, he takes his craft very seriously, uh, doing everything as proper as you can, while still, of course, remaining highly illegal. Um... He is a man of class. He's uh, he's got a, a silver tongue, a, a quick wit. He's not that strong, but as none of the party is, is not Bullshit. necessary. Bullshit! You almost killed us. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about that. He's a little Liar. strong. He's not physically strong, but he's got plenty of tricks up his sleeve, and the number one is always him. He will always watch his own back amongst others. But he did come to become at least business partners with Glib and SG. Gonna make up for lost time. And I will say, uh, if, if it's the time to, that ever since the whole fiasco of getting roped into a nightmare contract with SG and Glib, you know, all things considered, business has been booming mm -hmm. ever since the whole God-killing thing. High-profile individuals with lucrative deals. Of course, I'm on vacation, so we can't get to them yet, but well, it's good. Business. Perhaps we will. Perhaps we will, because as Goodbit is uh, is chilling on the beach, 
in his, I believe you said in a text earlier that he was still wearing a suit, but a, a casual suit, if that makes sense. He's yes. Like, he's, he's still dressed for business, <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's slightly, this is his, it's his, business it's his casual like business gold wear. member from... Leisure suit? <laughs> yeah, it's like rolled up, rolled up pant legs so he can get his toes in the water, and yeah, just like question, some suspenders. Are you, are you wearing a vest? Uh still are you wearing like is it still like a tie a shirt a vest and a jacket it's still like a three-piece suit but like... it's it's everything but the jacket but it's also <laughs> like it's also like beach colors so it's like a tan vest oh yeah, like, that's so a tan okay. suit <laughs> yeah <laughs> my leisure outfit he's still fucking roasting he's sweating like a oh pig. i'm sure <laughs> yeah because this is you know this is a tropical despite being on the north side of the continent this is a oh, tropical yeah. area because climate here is not consistent with, <laughs> with earth uh, so as Goodbit is sweating on the uh, on the beach of one of the many beaches of Wainua, uh, you hear uh, a slight sort of clanking from behind you, and turn around to see uh, another merman wearing a similar sort of leg setup to Mercury. Now, from your time in Wainua, you know that these things they're not incredibly common. They're you know usually the uh, oh, I, I have up Panda's volume chat. I'm I'm seeing that. Uh, that that is, I have I have turned up his volume in my thing, so that should hopefully fix it a little bit. Uh, you know that these sort of leg rigs, they're expensive. The rich among mm. Wainua usually have the more people who have some sort of money. Uh, while Mercury's is, you know, wooden and very pirate-themed, this person's is more traditional. It seems like it's made of metal. They don't really look like, you know, the peg legs. They're more traditional legs, though they are still kind of bulky. Uh, this figure comes up behind you and goes, Excuse me. You good bit. Who's asking? As, as someone in your business should understand by now, that's uh, not the question you want to lead with, is it? I've got a job for you. <laughs> All right, what's the job? Uh, he kind of looks around at the fairly populated beach. He goes, not here, of course. Thought you were a professional. Well, I am, but you did come to me on my vacation, so I assumed you'd be okay with it. But we can go to... I, I think I could spare some time. Uh, the mysterious he figure... He sips a, a fat martini just <laughs> <laughs> with, like, a little tiny straw. Perfect. Uh, the figure kind of nods and gestures for you to follow uh, and then walks off. Actually, though, interestingly, he walks like, towards the water boundary of the city, presumably heading for one of the buildings that is on the aquatic half. Uh, but as he's about to uh, to go in, he uh, turns to you and he kind of, like, tosses you a little amulet. He goes, I'm going to need that back, but just for now. All right. I assume this is something with water breathing? He doesn't say, but presumably. The water is, the okay. water is shallow enough that you can, like, test it. You know, this is... Not some sketchy. This is the public right. beach that Dip he's walking down. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you slip on the amulet. The amulet does seem to have some sort of water breathing function to it. Uh, and he leads you down a, a path. You know, a, a, he's going down a pathway, not just walking down the beach. Into a sort of a, a smaller building. It appears to be some sort of office of, you know, like a random store or something like that. doesn't really matter what say. It's like a clothing store or something. Uh, and he leads you into a back room. You kind of get the idea as someone who's worked in a criminal industry for a while that this seems to be some sort of front business that he's using as a cover. Of course, of course, uh, as yeah. you do. Uh, so he sits down at a desk in the back room and kind of gestures for you to do the same sitting across from him. He goes, I think you already know the target. Yeah, pirate bastard by the name of Mercury. Interesting. Uh -oh. <laughs> Already getting and, some And what would you like me to do? He, he kind of leans in. He goes, Mercury stole my ship. Now I'd like it back. That ropes. A stolen ship. How, question for the DM, how, how much of me and Mercury, how close have we, how much have we hung out in the last week? I would say a couple times, but he has largely been busy. Uh, he also seems to not want to stick around in one place for too long, though you do not know why. Uh, he and Sky Skimmer have been have been going all over. Whether it's you know, he says it's just kind of to like test out his abilities, but right, he's that's you know you don't know him well enough to tell if that's the truth or not. Um, I don't know if he knows that I know Mercury, and I'm not going to tell him. Mm -hmm. But I go, 
a stolen ship. Whoo! And, and 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 why is this ship so important to you? Why is the ship important to me? It's a yeah. ship I've had in my family for generations. I know you when were I'm in Rift Reach when his ship was sighted flying around, or however it did that. Figured you might be the man for Indeed the job. Indeed I was. Indeed I am. Now, we will have to go under contract. I click open my briefcase. <laughs> and just start whipping out some stuff. So let's get into like the details here. Uh, do you care if Mercury is dead or alive? I care more about the ship than him any day. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So I won't charge you a murder fee then. Um, after that, how soon would you like this ship? Well, given that he can fly all of a sudden, I assume it won't be an easy mission. Yeah, let's give you... I don't think so. I'll be generous. I'll give you a month. Give me some sort of information about his whereabouts in that time frame and I might be able to extend your deal. As I said, he's flying now. It should be a interesting contract, so I'll be lenient. Absolutely. Very much appreciated, Mr. Uh, what was it? It doesn't have to be real. You just, uh, just something to write in the margins. Uh, <laughs> he kind of like thinks, that he, you know, when you ask who he is, he is completely silent until you say it doesn't have to be real. Uh, and then he kind of just like looks down and s seems to say the first thing that comes to mind. He goes, hey, you can just call me legs. Legs it is. All right. And then I do one last little signing. I rotate the contract to him. Be like, please just sign legs there at the bottom. Uh, and we will be good to go. He kind of, you know, groans. And goes, ah, I heard you were all about these stupid things. But he signs the contract anyway and hands it back to you. <laughs> Can Wait, I have a question for Chad. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Point out everything. Uh, Ch Chad is pointing out the fact that you just said you're not going to charge a murder fee <laughs> yeah. as a bounty hunter. <laughs> that is the most under the fucking table shit I've ever heard. <laughs> it's so fucked. I have a question for good. I'm not going to charge you an additional fee on top of the fee I'm charging you to do my job. <laughs> that's that's the structure of the business, you know. Hey, it's the business. What I what, microtransactions. The burger you know? is twenty dollars. The burger making fee is six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's it's not like this is an industry that can be government regulated. You either take the hover exactly. or you don't. <laughs> Good bit. Do you, do you think we're gonna Actually, unionize? I'm wrong. It is heavily government regulated. Not this way though. <laughs> <laughs> Did you add no loophole to your contracts? Of course, of course. I learned that one from a friend. <laughs> Um, and yeah, contract signed. I tuck it back in my briefcase and go, well, I will get right on that, Mr. Legs. Uh, and I will keep you updated on his whereabouts. Sips Martini. The Martini that I should note, you did take underwater. <laughs> Dang! Oh! <laughs> it is both very self -made. Yeah, that's probably, like, you, you actually, not, terrible. not only did you take it underwater, you are underwater currently. <laughs> like, how did you, how did you, like, Sip salt water. I imagine that dispersed almost instantly and you just have a cup that is full of water like everything else is. Well, this amazing. is not a party of, intel of intelligent beings, so. No. Amazing, amazing, amazing. No, it is not. All right, so, uh, ah. uh, legs kind of nods and goes, keep the amulet as a down payment, if you will. Lovely. Um, and I will say to you, and it, it is up to you if Mr. Legs here notices this, but there is, okay. I did write in, if this job, if Mr. Goodbit at any given time deems this job not good business, he can terminate said contract. Okay. Uh, Very tiny print. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to I'm gonna roll, uh, I guess, a perception check to see, maybe an insight even, I don't know. I'll roll something. Uh, he does not seem to notice. Excellent. Click. Pleasure doing business with you. Just go to shake his hand. Uh, he shakes it in return, though he does not speak. Uh, it seems to just kind of wait for you to make your way back out. I like how he so has waterproof do. paper. <laughs> oh, yeah. You gotta okay. be ready for anything. You know yeah. Mean? Oh, wait, no, good bit. You're right. I was gonna say, I was like, obviously he has waterproof paper. But yeah, good bit, I guess. You know, you knew you knew where you were going. You knew the city you were going yeah. to. He, he, he knew me. 
So he knows that there water can spring up at any given time. Sure. All and, of his paper yeah, is blessed ever, to make ever sure it doesn't get wet. Ever since the glib incident, um, <laughs> uh, you have traumatized uh, everything is waterproof. Man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of the glib incident, that is an excellent time to uh, to nicely segue over to Panda's character. And uh, I think it's actually going to be best. I'll just throw Panda into this. Uh, Panda, describe your character first. I think that's going to be the uh, the best way to start off gotcha. Glib's little intro here. So Glib is a former human mage who got uh, expelled from the magic school he was at for cheating. Uh, the punishment he received for cheating was being cursed by a kraken beast and being turned into... Well, no. he The... The punishment he received was being turned into a frog. Uh, the result of him cheating uh, a basic create water spell was that he accidentally summoned an elder god and got cursed. Then on his way out with all of his stuff from the college, he was bitten by a vampire. So now he is a vampire frog who is also cursed by a kraken. Um, however, in the last season, his kraken was mysteriously murdered. Yep. Uh because he's the only person who can hear his Kraken God, and randomly he was called out of nowhere, uh, and his Kraken God died on the line. He also has two quests in life, and that is to become human again and to get some fucking pants. However, his skin uh, excretes a very thin layer of slightly acidic mucus that only can burn fabric, so pants aren't an option, and now his God is dead. So there, there's yeah. that. He's, uh, he's had a bad time. Uh, now I'll pull up the map. He's again. also kind of a dick, as we should also add on top of that. He is very much very rude. To everyone. everyone in this campaign is in their own way. <laughs> now I'll pull up <laughs> the time. map again. Good times. Uh, well, the other party members have gone on you know vacations to their respective spots. Glib, a little bit paranoid because of the death of his god and uh, loss of many of his powers, has decided to stay in Riftreach with the other gods where he thinks he will be safer. However, I have pulled up the map for a reason, and that's just because I want to point something out to everybody, and I actually don't think I told the players this yet. Uh, I would like to point out on the far east coast, the city of Bowenburg, that is where Glib's Magic School is. If anyone was curious, Glib's Magic School is on this map. It is in Bowenburg. It is like the main feature of the city. So uh, that's where Glib is from, somewhere around that area. Uh, but as I said, Glib is not there. Glib is still hiding out in Riftreach because, like I said, Riftreach has the most powerful wizard in the world, Callisto. Uh, it has one of the uh, few active gods that you know about and seemingly the strongest one, Polnaros, now in his human form again, known as Prophis. Uh, but they have been very busy. They have been busy restructuring as much of the, uh, the city as they can, trying to put together the fractured pieces of the Symmetris Brotherhood. Lots of busy work that Glib is not really qualified to help with. And so while he has been, you know, safe, he's pretty much not been talking to a lot of people and has been hiding out in his room for much of his time. However, as Glib is hiding out in his room on one of, you know, these, these normal days, suddenly, out of nowhere, uh, you feel something that you have not felt in about a week, which is a sort of burst of energy that seems vaguely consistent with the water magic used by your patron. Am I feeling this in my head, or is it like physically I can feel? You can feel it physically. Okay. Um. And was I? <laughs> I'm assuming I was hiding out in my you, room. You can right? kind of you like... can kind of pick exactly where you want to be. I was doing that for flavor, but you know. You... Okay. Yeah. Um. Glib's just kind of been uh, hiding in the room because he knows that there are gods around. So if anything happens, he will probably hear the giant centipede. So he's kind of just hiding in his bed. Uh, and the second he feels the energy, he just fucking topples out of it and hides behind the nearest thing. Uh, just stick! And stick flies over and he grabs it oh, and he's yeah. pointing it at the fucking uh, door. We should explain what, explain what stick is really quick. Oh, right. Also, I, uh, uh, very early on in the previous, uh, episode previous one campaign, of the previous campaign. <laughs> yeah, episode one of the previous campaign, Glib received a magic stick that he didn't know what it did. It's just a staff that looks like a normal wooden stick. Um... And it actually is a semi-conscious stick that obeys any order you give it. Uh, it can't do anything like shoot lasers or anything, but he can command it to do anything, and it's also invulnerable. Yeah. So he just has a remote control and vulnerable stick. Yeah. The mysteries of the mysteries of stick are something that is also, as of yet, largely unexplained. But for now, 
It is an invulnerable floating stick that seemingly does anything within reason that you can tell it to do. Uh, yeah, like point at someone or fly over. So I topple down from the bed, hide behind like a dresser and just stick and flies over and I'm holding it at the door. The first. energy uh, builds for a couple seconds in a, you know, a very dramatic uh, buildup before it suddenly just kind of fizzles out and there's a little pop sound. And looking out behind the dresser, you see floating in the center of the room, seemingly looking around for you, is your familiar Blob. What the hell, Blob? Uh, 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 oh, thank God you're here. Blob's usually uh, aloof. I and fucking yeah, dead, man. Blob's usually aloof and calm and kind of emo demeanor is not present at the moment. Seems very worried as he kind of like floats over to you and does something that he has never done before. Uh, not that it's very mechanically possible with him being a tiny squid with bat wings. He kind of seems to try to give you a little hug. <laughs> the dick he's immediately like dick, what the fuck what is happening however as he touches you you feel at least some of your kraken given powers return in some capacity what the hell did you just do <laughs> uh, uh, I, I don't i don't exactly when the kraken lord when when the kraken when, when the crack when when the crack uh, hold it together man what the fuck happened he's uh, as as you can tell he is panicking and seems to have been panicking for probably most of the last few days. He goes, I, I, I took, I managed to took, take some of the, I took, I got some of his power and I gave it, I gave it back before it was taken. Okay. Thank you. Um, what the fuck happened? As I, uh, so, so I was in, I was, I was, I was in the water dimension. Uh, this is where I normally live. I was in my. My little, my little, my little tunnel. I'm, I grab him by the face and just go, take a fucking breath. <sighs> little like mucus bubbles start like kind of coming out as he hyperventilates, yeah, but they well, get slower. Yeah, right, fuck. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. Okay. I was in my tunnel where I usually live unless you're summoning me. And I heard the Kraken Lord die. I didn't see who did it. But uh, there was once he was gone, there was nothing there. So I went to, I went to the throne, and most of the power was gone. But I took, I took some of it, because I know you've dealt with gods before, and I thought that you could deal with it. But when I came to give it to you, there were these monsters everywhere, and I got, I don't, I managed to get my way out and come back here. But it took me a few days. Okay. Um. Monsters? Monsters. Where? They were in the water dimension. There's usually weird stuff down there because it's like an abyss realm. But they were scarier than usual. And I don't know where they came from. Okay. Uh. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. Uh. Do you know, are they coming here? Should I be worried? I've been cowering behind a fucking dresser for the last week and a half, man. What is going on? Good, your blob kind of gives like a little squid shrug. Doesn't seem to know anything other than monsters showed up when the Kraken Lord died. And now he's here. Okay. All right. Um, shit. Uh, yeah, you should... You should probably not go back there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. You, you chill with me. I got two gods on call, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go talk to them. And I uh, walk towards the door, still like holding <laughs> stick, just desperately. Uh, nothing happens. No, no weird monsters burst out of anywhere to attack you uh, as you head out of your room. Towards you know one of the work chambers where you assume the uh, the new heads of Rift Reach are working on things. Yeah. Uh, entering the room, you see them again hard at work. Uh, Callisto is there, you know, looking over a bunch of charts and things. Prophet is also there, though he looks notably a bit more bored than anything else. Uh, and Doc is also there. Uh, for for new people, Doc. Oh, fucking Doc. Oh god. Doc <laughs> is the leader of the order. Well, one of the leaders, sort of the the scientific leader of the Order of the Eye, which is an organization of time traveling psychics. 
He's not very good at explaining things, and therefore that is pretty much all that the players know. Something about psychics starting a psychic bloodline in the past and new dimensions and gods being created. Lots of very complicated stuff that, again, if you've seen The Good Place, the Jeremy Baramy scene, that was what that was largely based off of. Um, Doc is rambling on about something. You can okay. try to listen in if you want, but I, don't I didn't think you did. about anything that Doc <laughs> says. So I, I walk in and just be like, hey, yeah, right, that's good, whatever. Hey, guys, um, my god's dead. Provis immediately, like, they all kind of, like, look up at your appearance. Uh, Doc doesn't really seem, you know, particularly annoyed or happy to see you. He just, just kind of stops talking and then looks around. Uh, Callisto looks pissed that you came in, but Callisto kind of always looks pissed. Uh, Prophis looks very happy about the distraction from the meeting, but everyone's face kind of drops when you blurt out, my god is dead. <laughs> yeah, uh, so this is this is Blob. He is my familiar, who is assigned to me by my god. Uh, say hi, Blob. Blob waves. Yeah, okay. Um, he just came back and gave me just the teensiest little bit of, of water god power, and also... Uh, my my water god died like a week ago, which is why I haven't uh, fucking left. Um, apparently, that entire dimension is filled with monsters now, and more monstrous monsters than are usually in the depths of a water dimension. I, I don't I don't really know what to do with that information because I am again just a fucking dude. So anything is helpful. Uh, so also I want to point out something in chat that chat uh, that chat has acknowledged. Yes. Uh, Callisto and Prophis are in a relationship. People in the chat have referred to them as eldritch gays, and that is basically what they are, yes. Uh, but as you, uh, as you say that. this, no one responds for a solid minute until Callisto finally just dead stares you and goes, your god died and you waited a week to tell us this? I didn't think it was a problem! We've been dealing with gods <laughs> all month and you didn't think it was a problem! No, because the last god I did, the last god that we dealed, we fucking handled it, and I drank the motherfucker. That's not a problem anymore. This motherfucker died, and as much as I fucking care, that's just the end of my fucking problems. Okay, Callisto kind of puts his head in his hands and starts muttering something. You can't hear what. It's probably derogatory. Uh, as you guys have been talking, Doc has immediately whipped out several instruments uh, and kind of like grabbed Blob by the tentacle and dragged him over to where they were working, and they've started analyzing that some is. stuff <laughs> after after you know this takes a, a moment oh you said blob. oh yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah grabs glib too no grabs blob. <laughs> uh uh you can hear you can hear them kind of saying like oh that's that's fast it's because the readings are consistent with everything else you know science mumbo jumbo science magic mumbo jumbo yep. whatever you want to call it hey fucking bro what that's that's my guy what are you doing don't be analyzing my guy like the that. readings calm down He's a familiar! He's magic! This is a specific off. type of magic! You can't just tell me it's magic! There are multiple different types! We've just learned about several different <laughs> elemental energies and multiple dimensions around. He goes on. He's one yeah. magic! So, Doc me. goes on, uh, rambling again. Everyone else in the room ignores, <laughs> ignores them. Oh, Doc is a changeling, by the way. Uh, and a changeling like SG. So, uh, Prophet finally speaks up and Prophet goes, Okay, you say your god died. How? That might be a good place to start. Oh, uh, he, he murdered. He he got killed by something. Uh, he kind of gurgled that there was something that uh, there was a there was a murderer, and then he fucking dipped. So uh, when you say that the god was murdered, there's another brief pause, and then Callisto just goes, "What?" <laughs> Yeah, that's just... Is that not normal? No! We've murdered, like, three gods in the past It doesn't month. mean it's not a noteworthy event! <laughs> You've become desensitized to this shit. I'm sorry, mystery man. You've been fucking off in a goddamn shack for the you last... You murdered one years. god and you're already desensitized to it? What are you talking about? I... Did... Fucking gods are just, you know, spicy meals to me at this point. I mean, what the fuck do you want me to say yes. here? Uh, so Callisto uh, puts his head in his hands and starts saying the same things that he uh, was before. But he's not muttering them this time. He's just outright saying the rude stuff now loud enough. He knows you can hear him. 
Uh, at this point, uh, Doc interjects again. I go, ah, I think this might be a good time to present our newest findings to everybody. Can we, can we bring the others back? Can somebody translate the old man? I, I, I will try to speak plainly, as plainly as I can. Uh, and then Prophet kind of like leans over to you and goes, I'll cover it. Don't worry. Uh, he said, that said, uh, I think it's probably time to uh, bring bring the others back into the fold, as it were. Now, uh, all of these events, all of these little stories that have been going on have been happening concurrently. So after Dramaticus leaves SG's room and as Goodbid is on the way back to his beach vacation, uh, Prophet opens up two portals very easily. He's a chaos god. He can do these sorts of things. Uh, so both of you see portals with Prophet on the other side just open next to you. And he kind of just waves, goes, it's time. Things are happening. Ah. It, it, is this going to take a while? I have to fight a very strange man to get him to owe me favor. Also, quick question. Is water just pouring in from... Uh, I, uh, I assume this. <laughs> that he was on land by the time this happened. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, okay. Okay, all right, good. Yeah. All right, sorry, continue. Uh, Prophet goes, don't know murder mystery. Something we should deal with. And then he kind of like okay. he kind of angles the portal to show Glib. Goes say hi, Glib. Hi. Oh, oh hi, Glib. Hey. Is this Prophet or Clip? I'm soaking Prophet. wet. Prophet is the one My that suit the is ruined. Yeah, yeah, you are very, very wet. <laughs> Do I got time to change clothes? Your <laughs> normally upright mustache is, is like uh, a down. <laughs> <laughs> like, hi. Prophet kind of just goes. Probably not uh, before anything major happens, but for the briefing, we should do it now. All right. <laughs> All right. Toss and my as soon as I... of water. <laughs> Walk through the portal. As, as soon as I step through the portal, I say, oh, hello, everybody. Hi, Doc. Hi, Callisto. Prophet, have you heard from Kylin? Uh, Prophet goes, oh, yeah, Kylin is, is doing fine. Not a priority at the moment. Uh, Glyn, did they already know about everything so i might have just not told anybody anything and just kind of mooched off of uh off of the the wait staff for the past week so i didn't think it was a problem what was not wrong? by the way to the chat full-on lying you saw <laughs> how fucking jumpy he was he was just like ah i'm just gonna fucking keep this under wraps it's like a kid who broke something and hit it <laughs> what is problem believe you not so you did God, not my... enjoy vacation uh no also my god got killed by something like I'm not that sure happens what. all the time and though right it... <laughs> right that's what i was saying but you did nothing you just kind of went on vacation i did something i hung i hung around around where these fuckers are so that i wouldn't get shot and i point i'm pointing at mystery man and callisto kind of goes oh just because you're around me doesn't mean you won't get shot <laughs> <laughs> oh i know i won't get shot fucker you'll just get shot first <laughs> anyway i want to i, I want to be able to see if he's lying can i do insight uh yeah insight against against glib's deception that was <laughs> <laughs> It's a nine. Oof. Can I also roll insight? Go ahead. Ah, first roll. I need to see. Ooh. Uh, what's my insight? Nine. That is a 18. Okay. And my deception is 16. Okay, so good bit, good bit, good bit knows. Lying. Hell yeah. Are you saying good anything about it, or are you just keeping it? Oh, I'm not saying okay. anything, but I know. Okay. Honestly, Glib, you seem to be taking this whole situation in stride. Honestly, I, I'm surprised. I'm, you're, you usually are a bit of a scaredy, scaredy frog. <laughs> I love you too, SG. Uh, Callisto at this point interjects. He goes, oh, okay, lovely reunion. Let's get to the important things. Glib, do you have any leads, any information on who murdered a god besides you? No. Nothing. Nothing. Uh, he just, he kind of gurgled and then died. But that's kind of, gurgling is kind of his thing, because water, and also, I'm I'm pretty sure he's a squid of some kind. So. Wait, what do you mean pretty sure? You've never met him before? 
he's been a voice in my head and if you look at him for too long you go fucking insane so no yeah yeah <sighs> uh callisto upon hearing this uh you he like gets up opens a portal and walks through it uh on the other side of a wall you hear him loudly scream an expletive and then walk back through the portal into the room. <laughs> uh, at which point, Doc kind of interjects. Uh, I think I might be able to provide some insight on that front. Uh, Doc then just goes. I'm going to spare you all and myself having to improvise another Doc rant because I'm sure I'm going to have to do more crap like that for the rest of the session. Uh, afterwards, after this is done, uh, Doc kind of looks around, looking for comprehension from anybody. Does not see it. Prophes kind of just looks and goes, Excellent work, Doc. Uh, let me confirm that I'm understanding you by rephrasing. And then kind of like shoots you all a look, saying like, Okay, let me explain that better without offending uh, offending them. <laughs> uh, probably goes, so, uh, Doc here has been doing some research on the whole God Throne business. Uh, we, we actually sent Canyon to collect some data, but haven't heard anything from him yet. Uh, we were focusing on the problems at Rift, uh, of Rift Breach at hand, of course, but it couldn't hurt to have any research going on in the background. Uh, what we found is fairly interesting. Obviously, uh, the gods all give off a, a sort of energy. Uh, my body is charged with it. Areas that Aldor frequented uh, in his godlike form are also charged with it. There were trace amounts of it, well, fairly more than trace amounts of it, on Mercury... Uh, and most interestingly, your little squid thing, what was his name? <clears throat> blob. blob. Say blob. hi, Blob. Waves again. Uh, according to Doc's findings here, Blob is also carrying it, which confirms our theory that it has some sort of relation to gods. Here is the thing. Uh, what we found, this energy is not just present around gods. It's a sort of... What, what did you describe it as, Doc? Ah, background radiation. It's a background radiation. Uh, Prophet goes, yes, that, whatever. It's present everywhere in our world. Recent revelations about that aside. However, in, in gods and godlike things, it is in a higher concentration. Like, they're in closer proximity to some sort of creation force or something like that. We were hoping to not have to investigate this until later, since it doesn't seem to be a new finding, but... We have found some abnormal concentrations of it elsewhere in Vontral. Now, I'm going to pull up the map here. Uh, players, I have texted you the map. I would, If you're not watching a stream, I would recommend getting it ready. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, I'll go ahead and tell you as a DM, this is basically picking your starting quest. Uh, there are multiple, multiple options this time, and I will go ahead and say this. Picking one quest does not lock off any of the others. You will do multiple of them. They all flow into each other. It's just kind of what you want to do first. Uh, so, Prophet kind of kind of moves over to Doc's station uh, and shifts some stuff around, revealing a map of the world with several areas circled. <clears throat> uh, he kind of he first points to Rift Ridge. He goes, "Obviously, there's a high concentration here in the city, but that's probably because of the God Battle that took place a week or so ago. But there are uh, there are Makes four sense. other areas. Uh, the first one is actually SG. You were in close proximity to it. It is in Parian." Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of data about what is causing these specifically. We can pick out that it is a higher concentration of primordial energy, we'll call it, but we don't know how to pick out what dimension it's from or what could be causing it. Uh, Parian, it is possible that the energy is coming from the festival, which is just about to begin. There's a much higher concentration of people there at this time. There are many sort of rituals going on in, in celebration of Victoria and all that. It could be that those are somehow channeling more energy of, of magic. Sort of on the same vein of uh, magical things, Glib, I think this is an area which, which you will be familiar, Bowenberg. Bowenberg also has an abnormally high concentration, though this again could be due to the magic academy there. We've never had to test this sort of radiation before. We don't know if any of these are abnormal or anything like that. The magic academy could be increasing levels of radiation there. Uh, now the third that place is evil i wouldn't be surprised the third is a more interesting one it is in uh, to the south in the thracrean city of gadayama <clears throat> we're going to be honest we have absolutely no idea why there is any sort of uh, of energy spike here we haven't detected any supernatural instances in gadayama before uh, and the fourth is the fourth is maybe the most interesting of them it is far to the west 
uh, in, in Aragdus. However, while the others are high concentrations of, Arag uh, of energy, Aragdus is the opposite. It's devoid of this energy. Again, we've never scanned it before. We don't know if this is a new development. But while this energy is present all over the world, Aragdus has basically none of them. Now, to the players, I will sort of go over uh, what these places are, because this would be common knowledge to your characters, and I'll leave the map up on screen for this. Uh, we've already gone over what Parian is. Uh, Parian is the city where the Victoria Festival is held. Uh, otherwise unremarkable, but, you know, for that one month, it gets party time. Bowen, is it currently that month? That festival starts in, like, two days. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, it. Bowenburg, we've also kind of <laughs> gone over. Bowenburg is intentionally the sort of most stereotypical fantasy city here. It is the location of the Magic Academy. Uh, Gatayama is an interesting one. That's a new a new location that hasn't been mentioned yet. It is a Thracrene city, as Prophet mentioned. If you don't know what Thracrene are, they are bug people, basically. Some D&D &D fans in the audience might know what they are. Uh, Gatayama Oops. appears as it does on the map. It is a singular, massive tower that is rising out of a crater in the ground. The entire city is contained within this tower in a network of tunnels and chambers, kind of wow. like a gigantic anthill. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That is both really cool. Yes, and really I love gross. I love Gatayama. It's a very cool, very cool location I made up. But uh, it is not exclusively Thracrene. It is a big enough city that there are other beings there. But since it, you know, since it is a bug hive, that is the majority of their population. Aragdus, as you'd kind of expect, is an anomaly. It used to be a very popular destination. However, uh, as you can see in the in between that and the main continent, there is uh, the ruins of a port city called Inanis. Uh, Inanis used to be, as I said, a major port city between the western island and Vontral, the main continent, uh, but it was destroyed by a flood, and rumors that the flood was caused by some sort of curse or dark magic kind of ruined the reputation of the area. It has never been rebuilt since. And given that Aragdus is a little bit hard to access without going through that city, it has become largely cut off from the rest of the world. Very few people go in and very few people come out. The one thing about Aragdus that is common knowledge Really, the only people that you see from there are the king and queen of the city-state. Uh, when there are meetings of all the major city-states for political reasons or what have you, usually held in Riftreach, the king and queen of, Aragnus, uh, of Aragdus show up at those, but really the only thing that is, is known about them is that they are ludicrously wealthy, like French aristocracy levels of extravagant. Uh, so they basically they show up to mm. these, these gatherings of the city-states, flaunt their wealth like crazy and then go back to Aragdus and they're the only people that are ever really seen just because of the difficulty to access from the city. Uh, so those are the four things. Like I said, uh, picking one of these quests does not cut off any of the others. Uh, you will go to all these places, but it's just sort of which one you want to start with. Uh, so having, you know, given all the information, Prophet kind of continues, I don't know if any of these are going to be related to the incident. Again, as we've said, it might always be like this, but We've never tested for this before, so this is the best lead that we have. And unfortunately, see, he kind of leans in and, like, he checks the room to make sure nobody else is there. <clears throat> uh, and he leans in and he goes, ultimately, we, um, we didn't really want to inconvenience you further. Callisto pipes in, we really didn't, believe me. Uh, but given that Symmetris has been going through some restructuring lately and the corruption probably runs fairly deep, you three are really the only ones we can trust with this at the moment, given that you were... It's not really that we can trust you, no offense. It's more that you already know about all of it. Not taken, we totally may as good. well keep this to a tight circle. So, I don't know. For... Understood. Uh, I have questions for the you, Rothius. Oh, and go ahead. Uh, so... Feel free, by the way, to ask if you have any questions about the lore that like would be common knowledge. Feel free to ask. Facts, facts, facts. I have a question for you, Prothis. If someone were to come in contact with this strange energy, would they be familiar with it? If someone were to come out in contact with the what? I didn't hear. With the strange oh, the, oh, energy? Uh, Prophet's kind of... Would they be familiar? Prophet's kind of shrugged. As we've said, it seems it comes in slightly different varieties, likely dealing with the, uh, the plane that it originated from, but I think it would be possible. It, it depends on so many variables. Uh, would I be able to roll an Arcana check, uh, like to see if 
blob has the same feel of I was gonna say, uh, yeah. dramaticus. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can do a you can do a, a, an arcana for that. Is that arcana? Uh, the, actually, it, uh, I would say yeah, probably because it's identifying magical energies. Did they mention and how profits. they were tracking this? Uh, so, uh, a doc kind of launches into another explanation. Prophet just kind of sh- shuts him down. And goes, and my energy is fairly palpable, okay. and through Doc's network of psychics, we've been able to sort of extrapolate it a little bit. So we're essentially looking it. for okay. the same type of energy signature that I give off in other areas. So it's because we have a god on our side that we're able to figure out the god. Yeah. Okay. Important that wasn't oh. amazing. Do you want to scan Blob or do you want to scan Prophet? They, uh, Doc scanned both, basically confirming that there is primor. No, no, no. I'm talking. I mean, I mean SG. Oh, okay. SG want to scan. Oh, Blob. I was gonna Blob. say Blob. Prophet's, Prophet's, Prophet's got actual guys. I was gonna say I was going to say the role applied for either since they're like right next to each other. Yeah. Uh, it's just scanning to see if any energy in the room is familiar. That helps. And can Prophet give me a uh, help action since he's also familiar? Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll go. We'll go ahead. Oh, he can help okay. with that. Actually, I'll yeah, I'll give him his own his own. No, no you, I'll put it on the help action for you. Go ahead. Yeah, that was that's a fifteen. Fifteen is actually not bad. Uh, again, this is a very like odd signature, so nothing insane. But uh, there, the energy is different. It is not this. It's definitely not the same as. Okay. It's definitely not the same as blobs. However, you can detect some vague similarity to Prophet's energy. But it's very vague. He has more similar. Oh, okay. The energy has more similarity to Prophet than it does to Blob. So Prophet, I might have come in contact with someone a little bit similar to you. I did. He challenged me to a duel, and if I win, I get to ask him for favor. But he has real bad vibes. I don't know if I want to fight him. <laughs> but. How hot was he? He was incredibly attractive, but his nice. personality was garbage. Nice. <laughs> oh, less nice. Yes. Uh, so, this is the group that will save the world. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> your, your guys are great. Great at this. <laughs> Prophet's kind of says, a duel. Was this one of the one of the gladiators or? Oh yes. So I went away to, um. Wow. I wrote down the name. Pa- Parian. Yeah. To try to get kind of control of this armor and I must say I have I am very well liked there and I this guy came to my door this morning and asked me to duel and I said yes but he I made him sign contract like I learned from Goodbeard and there's no loopholes so if he loses I get to ask him for favor but he has real bad vibes I think he might cheat uh Provis kind of said well I uh he kind of, you know, pauses for a minute and goes, well, if you think it's related, I mean, I don't know the energy. I can't compare. But if it was similar to anything, we don't have a lot of leads right now. I mean, that was the closest thing I can find. I got a question for you, Matt. Go ahead. How? Goodbid's obviously a businessman. Yeah. How well do you think he would know all of these cities particularly Aragdis because that one is supposedly supremely wealthy so okay uh i would say it, it's kind of largely up to you uh i can i okay. can kind of run through all of them i can run through like a little bit of the lore for the ones that i didn't mention uh because i went through all of them pretty much or most of them uh Aragdis i already talked about franklin franklin in the uh in the upper left here home of the infamous franklin castle yes the entire city is an extension of a pun that i made in the first season uh, just on a whim, by the way. That wasn't like a deeply thought out oh, sh- joke or anything. You don't know, know that. You don't know that. <laughs> anyway. I know you. <laughs> I know you, and that's why. Anyway. <laughs> uh, Franklin is a you know town located deep in the mountains. It used to be run by this tyrannical ruler, but the ruler was overthrown, and his castle was turned into a uh, training facility for some of the best combatants in the entire world. If you want a bodyguard or an assassin or a general, really anyone to do with, you know, larger oh, scale yeah. combat, Franklin is the, the place that you want to go. You want somebody trained at Franklin Castle. Uh, while Parian kind of has like, you know, Parian has a lot of athletes as well, but they're like Olympic athletes. They're like, you know, they're definitely like well-trained, but they're for more like sports and show your stuff. 
Franklin, they're killers. They're the military people. Uh, Wainua, we already went through. It is the mermaid town that is half in the water and half out. Abelio is a farming city mostly. It is a, a you know a collection of farms that largely grew into a a bigger area. One of the more simple cities on the uh, on the plain. Uh, and honest, we already went through is the destroyed port city. Rift Reach is where like a lot of stuff happened. Gadiyama, we went through. Uh, Fire Tongue Outpost. The volcanic island to the north is really inhospitable because that volcano basically is always erupting. It's not really known if there's some sort of magical thing that's causing that or some sort of just instability, uh, but it, it, it always is erupting and it always has been. That's not really a new thing. There are no majorly known settlements on it, but Fire Tongue Outpost is there, mostly so that the people and the city-states can kind of keep an eye on it in case anything goes wrong. Nothing has so far. Lauderton is there. So the remaining two are the two on the southwest side. East is a funny one. East is a mining colony located, you know, at the very south end of Vontral. It was originally just a mining colony. Like, that is all that it was. But as the mining colony, you know, continued mining, they planned to just mine out the area and move on. And they just kept finding things. None of their veins have run dry yet. And so the mining colony has just slowly grown until it's basically a city. Uh, it is still run like a mining colony. Like, the government still kind of treats it like a mining colony. And the reason that it has such a simple name is because most natives of East don't really even treat it as a city. They still think of it as a large mining colony. Uh, and so it's just kind of, it, it's East. It's there. It's very matter of fact. It's a working area that's basically grown into a city. Then there's one that has very tiny text, probably a little hard to read on purpose, which is the United Federation of Goblin Territories, which is surrounding a lake <laughs> in the southwest area. Uh, what that is basically known as to the rest of the world is essentially a bunch of goblins kind of playing at governments is what most people think of it as. It is a tiny little replica of the city-state system. It is a bunch of little goblin camps all around this one lake that sort of fashion themselves as independent tribes and kind of, you know, just put on this, like, mini-land version of the main uh, continent at large. They're not it's really... So they're not recognized by any of the other city-states, except, ironically, for Parian. Parian does allow them to compete in the Victoria uh, Festival and things like that, but uh, Parian is the only place that recognizes uh, the United Federation of Goblin Territories as anything. And those are all the different areas. Aragdus, how Goodbid's okay. young, so Goodbid probably would not really know a lot about the inner workings of Aragdus. You've definitely never been there. You would know okay. about. You would definitely know probably more intimately than the rest about just the insane. But wealth. never, never you, been no, there. You've definitely never been there, but you do certainly know about the insane wealth of the king and queen. I like to think so. I, I remember Frankie's now, mm -hmm. and I remember. Goodbid doesn't like them because they're just so brutish. Um, I like to think that Goodbid has done lots of work with the goblins. <laughs> yeah, and again, this is <laughs> just for this no is reason. The, you can you can kind of make up your own history to an extent in this world because this is the for world sure, building sure. uh, the world building season. So, um, so Goodbid this entire time has been taking notes on everything. So has Nathan <laughs> in yeah. real life. Um. And he's going to say, so it's interesting that Aragdis is the only one without energy. All I can say for sure is that Perry and Bowenberg and Gadayama all have it and Aragdis does not. So I don't think we should go to Aragdis because we shouldn't start with the outlier of the group. I think we should get some information. Um, so far, I believe, SG, you said that you saw something fishy in Perry. Yes, it's correct. I might have to fight this fishy person. I don't know how that will go, but I think that you you will have my back, you and Glib. Please. Of course, of course, of course. Uh, I don't know how good I'm going to be without a uh, without a god, but I can do. Oh, I mean, you're perfectly capable as vampire. That is very fair. I can also. Do. And again, remember, some of your powers care, yeah. are back. Uh, most of your practical powers are back. Obviously, if you try to right. contact your god, I mean, you haven't tried yet. You technically don't know what would happen, but yeah. Now, so when we sorry, go ahead. Now, Polnaros, 
what are we <clears throat> when we go to Process. these cities? Process. Oh my, my bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> he kind of winces Process. at the name, but doesn't he Don't doesn't dead name the god. Don't apologies, dead name the god. apologies. Oh no. Um, Prophet, what are we exactly looking for when we go to these cities? Because we can't see this god force. You want to know the wild thing? I had literally never thought of that. I I swear (laughs) to you, that was not my... There's another another thing that God Force means, and that is what it is based on. I I had never actually... I'm an idiot, apparently. Rewrite the campaign. No, no, no. That doesn't change. That's just... All I need to say is that that was the thing. I don't have to actually do anything. Anyway. uh, Title screen. Title screen. Hey, 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 hey. Title screen. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay, so uh, so uh, Doc kind of kind of pipes and goes, "I can probably uh, create some sort of detector for you." That would be incredible. It would be incredible, considering that in two days I think I have to do this battle. I'm not sure if I have to do it before the public Olympic type thing just kidding i'm not gonna make the olympics canon and like i said it basically is the the name of it like i said it's called the victoria festival and it is like carnival combined with the olympics you can call it the olympics if you want i don't care it, it's all part oh. of the larger victoria festival we'll just pretend you said the yeah. victoria yeah. festival yeah. <laughs> what are we some well, kind of god force i like how that also, <laughs> oh that my also god! kind of works <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. I love the um, name so much. So, uh, Victoria Festival. <laughs> so, we must go in with plan. So, as a dog makes device for us to detect, I thought, would you be able to make detector like something we can have on person and also maybe shoot at individual? Uh, doc kind of just like gives you a thumbs up and then their hand just flies out and just like full hand grabs blob <laughs> kind of like starts <laughs> grabs blob and starts doing all sorts of like weird magic blob starts <laughs> screaming <laughs> <laughs> and then after like a moment of everybody just kind of looking at stunned silence doc just kind of like tosses blob back blob kind of like wobbly floats back over to glib and doc goes there you go I want I want Glib to like full on jump in wind back swing on fucking Doc. I may right handing him to letting go stop of Blob. Him. I may okay, him. That's a... Actually, I'm kind of telekinesis. I just telekinetic stop it. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me, that was so many things happening at once. Uh, Panda roll. Panda roll a hit. We'll do this in an order or the order that it happened. <laughs> okay. What would I be rolling to hit in this? I mean, you were just gonna slap him, right? Like. Yeah. Well, no, I have sticks. Oh, so okay. Then, then like... roll for stick attack. Stick attack. <laughs> stick attack. Okay. Um, <laughs> what I would I do? That would be dexterity for? proficiency. Unarmed? Oh, that's so funny. That would be dex. All right. That would be an uh, 18. Okay. Uh, I'm going to roll <laughs> with a bonus for SG trying to block. <laughs> Bonk. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, it's not a bonk. It's a fucking like, like rats. jump back with a baseball bat and swing on the guy. <laughs> okay. Uh oh. no one really like uh Doc, you know, takes a full stick to the face. Uh <laughs> Callisto kind of just you know <laughs> I told you not to touch my fucking Prophet kind of Prophet doesn't look surprised that you did that. Uh <laughs> And he's not actively supporting it, but you can kind of tell he's like, yeah. So Ross kind of goes, okay, Glib, maybe don't hit people with sticks. Doc, don't touch people's stuff. Don't touch my fucking don't dude. Touch, don't do that. Just ask permission before touching things, Doc. <laughs> Doc. Yes, Doc, we must talk about this whole asking for consent, respecting boundaries thing. <laughs> We did. Po, uh, Provis and I had this same back. conversation back in the day. It was a kind of messy <laughs> conversation, but I think now he understands it. Uh, yes, for the record, I do understand. I did understand before, and then I did. You know what? It doesn't matter. Uh, regardless, <laughs> uh, Blob, Provis kind of gestures to Blob, 
and Blob just sort of like nods, seeming to acknowledge like, yeah, there's some, Blob has some sort of ability to detect uh, God Force, which is now what I'm going to be calling it. And I'm going to pretend that I was going to be calling it that the whole time. Well done, Blob. Now you will be very useful in coming battle. <laughs> Blob, Blob's still a little shaken. Uh, literally, actually. Yeah. Uh, we'll walk over to Blob. Hey, you good, mm -hmm. man? Mm-hmm. Right. Okay, great. Good, good. I just give him a little hug. <laughs> uh, Blob accepts the hug. And Prophet goes, uh, um, all right, I think in that case, we should be good. S SG, you were in Parian, correct? I was. I did leave for a bit to come here. I hope that uh, Dramaticus is not upset, because I think I was supposed to be behind him after he left. I'm not quite sure. Uh, well, I, that should be fine. I was going to say, since since we are uh, sending you to somewhere where I just portaled you from, I should be able to send you back quite easily. You don't need to take a longer trip for this one. Oh, perfect. That's simple. That's what uh, would like. I, a good bit. I remember you said you wanted to uh, to change. I would love to. I am soaking wet. <laughs> There's still like a puddle <laughs> forming on the I floor just, under him. Where he's the just water off the soaking wet. <laughs> I uh, still gotta get into my. I gotta get into my business suit. I'm in my vacay clothes. Oh my gosh. That's vacation clothes. Yes. It is suit. Yeah. <laughs> I could just imagine almost naked glib with just like a cloak. Standing aside from full suited. <laughs> as as Goodfriend goes That's... to change, I just say, Glib, I had fantastic idea on how to make you pants. So you are or frog, right? Do you not shed skin? It's a good question. We haven't addressed. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> if you just like <laughs> shed your skin. We can take skin to tailor and make you pants from your skin. That way you can't melt it off because it's your skin. Alternatively, ah. we can just skin you and then make pants from your skin. Pants made of Never skin. Again. That's <laughs> and I thought I was doing I scary that. stuff in this campaign Flash later. Pants. Flash <laughs> pants. I, I'm going to be like, I... I need a minute and just walk <laughs> to the bathroom or wherever. The As you're going, can. Prophet. Can someone can someone Google if frogs shed their skin? Yeah. Okay. Someone. Uh, some do shed. Poison dart frogs is kind of specifically what Glib is. Someone look up if poison dart frogs shed their skin. I'll send chat to do that. As that's happening, incredible. Prophet. As as Glib is doing, kind of goes. Uh, yes. If if you all need things, uh, tomorrow tomorrow morning, say I don't know, 10 a.m. Return here, and we'll send you on your way. I suppose. Yeah. Out of game, we all okay. pretty much agree to go to Parian. I mean, it seems like the most... The festival's in two days. SG saw someone there. I, it looks sus. That is a yeah, I will say also, because uh, I don't want to... You know, the whole point of this campaign largely is I'm giving... You know, you have options to do. Uh, the festival does last for a month, so you can go here, but if, like, you don't, you're not going to miss oh, out okay. on it if you if you don't I, go now. I am between... I am between the Parian and Gatayama just because I want to see the Bug City. But... <laughs> Um, yeah. Whichever one we want to I do. I think in canon, Glib wants to stay away from the college as much as possible because he fucking For hates sure. that place. I so. know Glib wants to stay away from the college, and that's why I want to go so bad. And like I said, you'll you'll go <laughs> to to <laughs> most, if not all of them. So this is right. just where you start. I, I mean, I love the idea of a gladiator festival. I'm a bounty hunter, of course I do. But God, I'm also open to Gadiyama as far as first stops. I want. I want it stated, this is going back to the previous point, Chad has revealed to me that uh, frogs shed and then eat their skin to maintain the toxin in it, and that is the grossest goddamn thing <laughs> I've ever heard. Hmm. Well, that's, I'm going to make a note of that. Uh, just Not doing no, that. No, someone not, is definitely going to make fun of me for it. For a minute. But the clip, that's great news. Someone's so going to fucking die. Skin. I don't know if you can, like, will that, or, like, it just happens. Shed on demand. I don't demand. know, maybe puberty. You have to go through pu frog puberty again, and you shed your skin. I'm also dead. So, like, I that's don't know if I'm point. generating I don't know if you skin. would be. This is so many layers to this. <laughs> oh, I can also regenerate legs, apparently. Oh, this perfect. We can Good just cut off your legs and make skin your legs. And then I'm still not meat. sure if I'm alive. That's I'm, I am a vampire. That everything might have stopped in here. 
I mean, we can only know by cutting off your legs and making pants out of them. Stay the fuck away from my legs. <laughs> okay. Goodman comes out in his full suit, and the bottom hat back yeah, on his head. Yeah, bottom hat. Bottom hat. Bottom hat. Do we need to restock your bottom hat? I have no idea how this shit works. Um, out of game, <laughs> we can't. It does not restock. I was gonna. Uh, I was gonna say you are in the the city where you got it. So if you want to go and get a restock, you are capable of that. But I don't think we can shove a horse back in it. Yeah, I don't no, know how to. No, you you guys can't. I mean, someone that's... someone who is trained might be able to. You guys definitely can't. <laughs> Like yeah, can you put a horse on this thing? Someone in Riftreach could, if you do go to Bowenberg, they've got crazy magic there. They could probably do it. Uh, but yeah, some someone in Riftreach could. The place where you got it can probably do something about that. For sure. If you if you so choose. I feel like the most miserable couple of days of Glib's life is going to be when we have to go to Bowenberg again. <laughs> and I'm just gonna be sitting there, just good. Damn it. It's going to be so much fun, Glib. We can like. Good I'm gonna need y'all to sign off on a murder. Oh, right like now. that's I've anything never new. A, I've never been to a, a real school before. I was kind of homeschooled in the village, <clears throat> so I'm very excited to see like traditional magic school. Oh, I should also say because uh, SG, you you had like a crime, like background where you were doing crime things in in a. You had an op in your back. That is true. Yes, I meant to, that. Uh, that was happening in East, by the way, if you're curious. So that's not relevant to any of the places that you're going right now. But that's I'm happening. I'm sure there's a lot of jewelry that, uh, That's happened. Yeah. <sighs> Straight up, that that was called. No, that's the, that's the bit. Is? That's the bit is that it has has the most matter of fact name, but it's pronounced East to be slightly different. It's just East. Okay. Uh, east is also. I'm sure since it's a mining town, I'm sure a lot of people expect it to be dwarves. But since I don't like normal fantasy races, that's the lizard folk town. Hell yeah. Lizard miners. Break the norm. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so... Are you... T hold on, hold on. Are you telling me that the bug city is, like, a 20-minute ride from the lizard 20 city? 20 minutes? This is a continent. <laughs> They're not that close, no. Okay, are you telling me it's, like, a two... Like, the closest available town to the lizard city is closest, the bug city? I'll pull up. They got a peace treaty. They closest <laughs> past the mountain range. Like, it's not close. Yeah, but still the closest. Like, if you had to pick where you're gonna live, you're like, yeah... Right over there is the people who fucking eat us, but you know, they're just they're over there. It's they're, not that big of a deal. It's like, fine. It's fine. It's fine. Tell me, there's at least like one war in in the history of this world where these two like just fucking sure, win at it. Sure, I'll you know his, this history is I can add stuff whenever I want. Sure, there, there's a war in the history of the town. If you if you decide <laughs> to go to Gadayama, maybe I'll throw some stuff in, and if and when you eventually end up in East, right. we'll we'll do some stuff there. Regardless. Uh, final final votes from everybody on where to where to begin, just so I have it on record. Um, I I'm voted for Parian or Gadiyama. Okay, so Parian it is. Uh, all right. So anything you want to do in your your time before the next day when Prophet send you on his uh, send you on the quest. Um, <laughs> should I we think do I should it? Should be all right. Should we do it? <laughs> no, 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 no. We don't need to. We'll do save it a person influencer for later in season. I, I will say, just for people watching as well as people playing, last time, Goodbit, the only reason Goodbit stuck around was because he was forced to in contract. This time, because it worked out so well for his business, he's just willing to do another crazy adventure again because it's only going to boost his Perfect. business. Perfect, yeah. Again. You've, already, you've so, already gotten another so he's higher profile to do job this one off the book because of it. You're here for the Guardians of the Galaxy reason. <laughs> You're here for the name yeah, recognition. Yeah, yes. exactly. <laughs> Uh, all right, so yeah, if nobody has anything to uh, to do in Rift Reach while we're you know in the the little time gap, uh, we will go right to the uh, the mission. Prof, uh, you show up at the the building the next day. You get kind of a shorter version of the same briefing that you got yesterday. No new information immediately comes to light. Uh, and then Prophet, whenever you guys are ready, opens up his portal. It seems to open in the exact same place that uh, that SG. Has a you know, it, it opens up in SG's room, basically where it was last time. Uh, you know, Prophet can't portal you anywhere in the in the world, but since he was able to sort of lock on SG, he sort of still has those coordinates saved, if that makes sense. So this is like one of the few places that he can send you immediately. Uh, so you step through and you are in SG's uh, quarters where she was. They are in sort of like the she's she's in the gladiator quarters basically in the uh, the nicer area. 
near the main arena in the center of the city where the gladiators are. Uh, again, the festival at this point, the festival officially would begin tomorrow because it waited a day. So the month-long uh, right. Victoria mm-hmm. Festival, which is be- just a gigantic a gigantic party celebrating basically the concept of victory. doesn't really matter who, uh, and that's one reason why it's such a popular festival for the entire continent is because basically anybody can show up anywhere and celebrate whatever victory they want. That's all it's for. Uh, so it's a very, you know... It's a festival of, like, bringing people together. A lot of fights also break out if people are celeb- you know, just victory. It can be, a, yeah, victories. just victory can be a polarizing concept. So there can be a lot of fights that happen there. Uh, and while this is not sort of on the books, a lot of the, the uh, athletic events usually have quite a bit of rivalry tied into them. And generally, if, uh, if two rivals, you know, are competing against each other, sort of the victory of the winner is sort of elevated a little bit higher in the minds of the public. So people are not only fighting for, you know, personal glory, they're usually also fighting to, like, cement their past victories more over others. Uh, Can I ask a quick question, like, DM-wise? Are we known now? Uh, That's a good question. And it would depend on the region, and it would depend on the people. It would depend on the people. Because it's, only, it's, been only, about a it's week. only been about a week, but certain people clearly do. Uh, SG, uh, SG was obviously mm-hmm. like, you were sent to the arena by uh, by Minerva, probably Minerva's connections are you know how they're how you're getting getting places. Minerva was the leader uh, for any new people. Minerva was the leader of the law enforcement organization before the old wizards returned. Uh, obviously, people in uh, Minerva knew go, uh, knew good bid. But that was probably a sort of criminal underground sort of thing. Yeah. Glib has been hiding out for a week, so who knows? Some people may, some people may not. It's a fantasy setting. News travels in weird ways. But good question. Very good question. I will also say that I I, I feel fairly confident in saying that Goodbid has not missed a Victorian festival in years. Yeah. <laughs> he comes every single year. He loves this shit. Yeah. Uh, it's a fun time. Okay, I also I'm gonna take the name that chat just gave Glib of Glib That's the God badass. Drinker, and that is that is the name that is that he's been trying to push is <laughs> when people <laughs> have to refer to him as a title. Yeah, that's badass. Uh, okay, so as I said, the festival starts tomorrow. Uh, if you you know go out and look in the city, you'll see a lot of preparations are getting set up. There are a lot of sort of like market stalls. You can see a lot of like stands and stages for various performances. None of them populated yet, but people are finalizing the last things for the festivities tomorrow. Uh, but you are in SG's room. You may at the moment do as you wish. Hey, um, just lore wise, what does this room look like? Like SG, did you, did you decorate the room at all? Or is this just the most plain room in existence? I would say at least when she got there, I'll, I'll interject real quick. This yeah. was a room for like a, you know, this is the gladiator quarters and in Perry and the gladiators are pretty well celebrated. So it's a nice room. It's not like, you know, it, it was temporary yeah. lodging. It's only for her little vacation. So she got set up in a pretty nice, pretty nice place. If you decorated it, it on your week's mm-hmm. day, that's up to you. Uh, but starting, it was pretty fancy. Thank you for coming to my room. Don't touch anything. I do have... Um, MBM security might be a mimic security, so if you do touch something and you get your hand bitten off, it's not my problem. I am insured. Oh, you should you um, should not have said that because I don't think it's public knowledge how much I love mimics because I haven't used any yet. Oh, um, <laughs> that's coming back. That one little thing, you, that one one off joke, is not a one off joke anymore. That's coming back. <laughs> MBM <I'm> security. <laughs> And I'm holding both blob and stick closer now. Like, yes, just don't what, touch. What the hell? I want to make up my brother, my brother and me joke. That's the same acronym. <laughs> I extend it out, make the same acronym, <laughs> but about mimics. I feel like they would appreciate that. Uh, okay, but yeah, you are in the in there. You can chill for another day. Wait, uh, your uh, SG, I should say, your fight for uh, your your fight with Dramaticus <laughs> was not officially scheduled. <laughs> Okay. Dramaticus didn't really do something about that. He just said an exhibition match, and that's kind of what he left you on. So, like, if, do I just assume he means the day before the vic- you, Victoria thing starts? You can assume whatever you want. You do not have the information yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing that, um, 
Hey, uh, wh- how long are we hanging out in here? Because you just made me fucking terrified of everything in here. <laughs> I mean, um, just don't touch the expansive things. Yeah, okay, th- I can understand. Th- when the fuck are we getting out of here? Why are you so jumpy, Glib? I thought you were so chill. Because you just told me everything in this room you need me. I didn't tell you everything. I just say some things might be a mimic. <laughs> When are we leaving? We can go look around now, if that would make you more comfortable. Okay, when are we fighting the god, is my question. And are we all fighting together, or are we just watching, like, a 1v1? Or what's, what's... Yeah, do I need to find seating? Uh, do I have to find seating for Blob as well, because now I have another person that I need to take care of? Yeah, Blob is very tickets? small. You can just sit in your lap like a baby. I am also very Blob small. Blob can also hover. Got little wings. <laughs> Blob can also hover. I also have sticks, so technically I can float above the stands. But like, I just what? What's the plan here? Do you know when you're fighting this guy? Are we just fucking hanging out in the room? What? What are we doing here? And we probably have to go find him to finalize battle because it was very vague. He gave weird vibe when I asked him to sign contract. I guess people don't want to sign contract without a lawyer present, but he signed it. Anyway. They never do. They right. Never thank do. you. Let's see if he gets it. Anyway. Mm-hmm. So we might have to go find him to make sure that it is a one-on-one or not one-on-one battle. He did not say, he didn't mention any other people being in on it, but he does Do you know like what an exhibition fight. match is? Not really. That is like a public fight. An exhibition oh. ma- I'll, I'll, I don't know, like, the, the te- I'm going to look it up and get, like, the actual definition. Like Battle for Beyond? Watch uh, that. Yeah. On the, I think it's like... Essentially, uh, I, yeah. World a sports like match which is not part of a competition but instead serves the function of demonstrating the skills of the players. Basically, it's not like an official fight. He just oh. wants to like... Basically, he just wants to publicly fight you for fun with people watching <laughs> is, is essentially what it is. Good bit here is that it goes, so how do we become a part of this exhibition match? Oh, are we allowed also, to join in? We do I, uh, have. I do want to point out, especially because Goodbid said he, uh, Goodbid has been to this thing before. Uh, betting yeah. is fully legal on these, by the way. Like, betting is and completely allowed it. on in everything. <laughs> everything in Parian's thing. Like, because they're, you know, it's about victory. If you win a bet, that's a victory. So, like, you, it's fully allowed. Huge gambler, yeah. Goodbid. Huge gambler. I am anticipating that this guy, Dramaticus, might bring posse. So I will also bring posse. You two will be, will be my posse. I mean, if we need to go down and give him a talking to to make sure we're all on the same page, I don't know what kind of vibes. You said it was bad vibe, but yeah. I just don't want your victory to be tossed away because he starts complaining that you brought friends and he didn't know. I mean... Technically, you are my lawyer. Didn't I am allowed to have contract? lawyer present. And then Glib is bodyguard. I, did, don't you have the contract for this exhibition match? Yep. Didn't you write it? <laughs> yeah, he the contract? definitely did write it. <laughs> Make the rules? <laughs> I hand, I hand Glibit the contract. Fight me. No loopholes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's not I do help. believe that is basically that, okay. the extent of what it said. <laughs> and you owe me a favor if I win. Interesting, interesting. I say we just write in. Uh, <laughs> right. Just write in after the fact. In the border, just like in the border. <laughs> on the back. He's the lawyer. It's legal. Hey, it's if we just fine. listen, if we just write it on the back, and he never looked at the back of the page, it, it's his fault for not looking at the back Guys, of the page. It was okay, there the whole time. Big, wait, 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 you have no everybody, hold, your, hold on, hold on. I gotta interject. I gotta interject. This is a big moment. Yeah. First crime of the season. Let's go. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> Woo. Yay, crime! Which crime are we um, committing this time? It's white collar. Which yeah, is forgery it's, of a right, legal it's, document. It's a little bit, a yeah, little bit forgery. more corporate We're committing than forgery it was before. Right yeah. <laughs> Good bit. Um, Do you have so, notary in, in briefcase? Of course. Yeah, are you like an official? <laughs> Get out everything I need. And uh, add the necessary clauses on the back of the page, because I know this guy probably didn't read the he back. Did not. I'll go ahead and tell you. I he also wanted to be back. noted. He probably writes it in a way more official manner <laughs> than the front of the page, so it's very obvious these are not the same person. This <laughs> is. It's like perfect scripture. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. yeah. She has chicken scratch for sure. Clause one, notary number three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By no legal means will somebody be able to back out of this fight at 12 noon. And the front just says, fucking fight me. <laughs> Dramaticus, heretofore referred to as the challenger, 
like that, like that yeah. kind of crap. Yes. <laughs> of course. Yeah. It's a perfectly legally binding contract. Completely legally sound. No loopholes. No loopholes. It says it right here. Excellent. Do you want to forge his signature on the back as well, just to make it seem <laughs> in any legal sense that we You'll have to roll did for that one. about the back of this page? I'm so sure. I don't sure. think that'll be necessary. Yeah, that would, be a, that would definitely be a roll. <laughs> we got the signature on the front. We can spin that. If we have any issues, I'll talk to him. All right. Okay. Wait, would Goodbit be right. familiar with Dramaticus? Oh, yeah, I should put, yeah, if you've been to the, he's, he's been like the, like the champion of every single combat match. Huge fan. For the last, as Huge long fan. as you've been going, probably. Well, actually, if you've been going since you were <laughs> if like, I see... if you've been going since you were like a kid, I think I said Dramaticus was the, the winner for like the past like five or six years. Uh, after I finish writing this, I'll be like, I can't believe I'm going to get a chance to fight Dramaticus. <laughs> So, so what do excited. you think our chances are? Together? <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, actually, I, I can I can tell a little bit more about Dramaticus since we have somebody who would be familiar with him in the party. Uh, and I guess, actually, Glib, yes. it's kind of up to you whether you know him or not because you were in a neighboring city when you were going to magic school. If you, like, attended the festival, you, you can say that. Um, um, I, <laughs> judging off of uh, Glib's personality... He doesn't exactly seem like somebody who wins yeah. a lot, <laughs> and he also does not seem like somebody who would go to a place where they celebrate yeah. winning a lot. I'm pretty sure that I actually actively dislike this festival. I'm <laughs> okay, fucking stupid note it. Their asshole fucking celebrations. <laughs> I <laughs> love this festival. Uh, so Dramaticus is known for. He's known for kind of as as a, should surprise nobody. He's a very showy fighter. Uh, he kind of makes he uh, he usually leads his fights like kind of his signature thing is he does not like strike for quite a while during a fight. He's known for like sort of dancing around, taunting his opponents, blocking and dodging hits, which he's very good at. But then when he decides to go in for the kill, like, well, you know, not necessarily kill, but victory when he decides to go in for the for the win, uh, it's usually very quick, very definitive. He uh, he, you know, dances around, does some showy stuff doesn't get hit and then when he's ready just boom got it so that's kind yeah. of his God his damn fighting it. I style. Had all spell of magic yeah if i had to spell magic it would be all over for that fucker does anyone have to spell magic in the party <laughs> I, so. I have counter spell but not to spell magic okay no no i don't next level up next level I detect up magic but uh yeah. This one, so yeah. Good, Darn. good bit. Good bit talks about that, and talks about when. So when SG asks, "Do we stand a chance?" He just explains exactly what you just explained. Yeah. It doesn't actually say if we stand a chance or not, but just <laughs> okay. explains gotcha. who Dramaticus is. Gotcha. Yeah. Damn. Uh, should I also know who Dramaticus is? You from like heard from the same way that somebody who doesn't watch WWE would know the Undertaker. Yes, that's a like, very that's a very good comparison. Okay. You know generally of him. Well, I'm like, okay, I'm like is this that super showy motherfucker that everybody always hypes up to God to, to Helen back? Yeah, the very handsome one. That's the one. Yes, that's him. Great. And we're going Lovely. to go fight them now. Woohoo! <laughs> It's gonna be so cool. Yay. The good bit. Is it important to know what he wants from me if I lose? Did you tell him he'd win anything? I don't think I did, but I told him I win something if he loses. Hey, if he didn't ask for nothing, that's on him. It's not in it's the contract. He did, he, did not ask, right he did not ask for anything. It is. It go. is very. It's not in the curious. contract, and therefore it is good business if you don't do anything. <laughs> it's good business. It is very curious, however, that he did want to fight particularly you for seemingly no reward. I would keep an eye on him. I don't know. I mean, he had weird vibes, but also I am basically God. I understand what he would want to fight. Yeah. For, do you have any sort of notoriety in this city? To to that point, it, it is not unreasonable that he has, as, as like the top gladiator in the city, it is not unreasonable that he like heard why SG was there. Uh, you mm. don't know if, you don't know that for sure, but like 
given his position and sort of the circumstances of the past week for SG, it is entirely possible that he heard that, you know, she was like part of the, you know, an instrumental part in stopping whatever happened in Rift Reach and is now training right. there. So it is possible okay. that he that he knows enough to, to want to have some motivation in that regard. Of course. Okay. That makes sense. That makes a little more sense. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So you uh, you have need to make sure if I'm you have here. the day. Like I said, at some uh, the festival starts tomorrow. You can you know go around the town if you would like. You could look for Dramaticus now. You can wait. Uh, as again, the festivities have not started yet, but floor is yours. We should probably check with Dramaticus about when we're actually fighting. Yes, we should do. So that. he doesn't just idea. show up in the middle of the night and is just like, "Hello, <laughs> we need to fight now." <laughs> 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 Would I know where to find him? I mean, I'm everyone knows where he is, so I can really just so, ask a random person, right? I was going to say, yeah, you don't know, but, I mean, you can ask somebody. I just kind of look to see th who the nearest fanboy is, other than Goodbid, oh. and ask that person. So, like, I'm sure there must be someone wearing Dramaticus merch. <laughs> so <laughs> you're in the, uh, you're in the, you know, the gladiator quarters right now, but you can find somebody who, uh, pretty easily, like, looking around the halls, you can find somebody who seems to work for the arena, at the very least. Uh, and you ask him where, where Dramaticus lives, and they give you, uh, they give you directions to a place, a specific place, which is kind of surprising. Uh, but they do, they do give you directions to a, presumably a residence within the city. Thank you, kind stranger. So we just go to that location. All right. So, uh, leaving the gladiator quarters, you are close to the center of the city, because this whole city is built around the arena. Uh, which is actually like it's wait a, he doesn't live in the gladiator quarters the door hmm? and not me he doesn't live in the gladiator quarters we'll, we'll get to that so uh <laughs> you're, you pass a lot of other you know gladiator areas it will it does seem like a lot of the gladiator quarters are for visiting because uh this is a, a, okay. this is an event that you know is is for the entire continent but uh you leave the arena and you kind of pass several other sports complexes on the way like i said it's a busy day but it's busy, as I've said, with preparation. It is not the festivities going on, but you can see a lot of people rushing around. There is, like, you know, a general air of excitement around, as you would kind of expect, uh, but nothing too crazy. Uh, you go to the address, uh, and when you get there, sort of just, like, in the middle of a city street, and as I said, this is a, a sort of Greco-Roman architecture, there is a large sort of, like, like big columns, gigantic massive mansion that is the address that you uh that you were were told about you've got to be fucking uh, weirdly oh, it fuck. does seem like it's not like set back it is just like built into the street uh, it kind of almost i'm imagining it's sort of almost like the white house in a way like a more like a more ancient version of the white house if you kind of imagine that that's sort of what it looks like just on a street are there just, nice. like, fan people around the front? Like, oh, I want to get pictures. Like, tours that stop to be like, this was where Dramaticus lives. Uh, there, are, there are a few people. Uh, interestingly, you actually see a couple people going in and out of the building, which is odd if this is a residence, like you've been told. Mm -hmm. Does this motherfucker have a monument to himself? Like, a, a goddamn museum for himself? Is his house a museum? In the that fucking city? That would be city? so tacky. <laughs> Uh, all right could i i want to walk up to the front door and see if there's like an attendant working for like tickets uh, you walk you walk up to the front door there is no one outside of the door but you peek in okay this is definitely a gift shop uh, <laughs> this mother fucker so yeah uh like it this. is definitely a gift <laughs> this tacky son of there a are like bitch. little little I just turn and I good bit like buying merch <laughs> there are you know like little little wooden <laughs> figures of dramaticus uh there are various like like fake weapons that seem to be toys possibly things he's used in other other events there are like scrolls and paintings oh, yeah, that seem to portray him like winning winning arena matches and things like that all the stuff you would expect from a medieval gift shop basically imagine what that is in your head and you're you're pretty on the nose there isn't uh, an attendant doesn't seem remarkable just a normal human man uh, behind a counter there are a couple other people milling around uh there is a door at the back of the gift shop uh but you don't you can't really see where it leads <laughs> therapy uh, isn't enough i, I have to fight to this man and, and win like, <laughs> <laughs> so, wait, wait, wait. Like, hey uh someone in chat said that good bid buys a dramaticus funko pop i, I, uh, I, I is... was just gonna say 
It is now canon that's that there are figures in that style. So, oh man, this must be this year's that. Dramaticus figurine. <laughs> <laughs> Grab it. I just slap it out of his hand. <laughs> Put that ah! shit. Back. <laughs> Come on, man. We're trying to be intimidating. Fuck. Oh, it's fine. I already have three. <laughs> <laughs> I go up to the human attendant, like, I'm, excuse me, I'm, do you know where I can find the real Dramaticus? I'm supposed to have battle with it. Guys, I'm so glad that this is where the story's gone, because I've had this character on lock for, like, a month just waiting for this to happen. <laughs> oh There's so... God. He's... I hate oh, this he gets so much better! He gets so much better! Son of Guys, anyway, done. anyway... Uh, this guy rocks! I'm so glad that this is how this has gone. Anyway, uh, what were you doing before I interjected? The human attendant, I just say, excuse me, do you know where I can find the real Dramaticus? I'm supposed to have battle with him. Uh, the the attendant, some fucking lawyer the attendant kind of like, in a, in a sort of condescending voice with the idea that like they've definitely given the speech way too many times. They're like, oh, well, Dramaticus doesn't usually uh, appear just for, for anyone off the streets. I'm sure you understand he's a very busy man. Do you know who the fuck I am? <laughs> so, so, wait. So oh, SG no. walks up and is like, can I see Dramaticus? And the attendant's like, no. And then Glib storms across the room and joins the conversation. <laughs> okay. Glib is going full diva. Yeah, so uh, the attendant kind of like looks over the counter. How bad, how bad do I want to piss Panda off? I'll How kill bad do bitch. I want to piss Panda off? I'll tell Panda you right off? now, I will start a fight. Uh, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to piss Panda off. Uh, the attendant looks over, <laughs> sees this little cloaked three-foot figure, and goes, I I'm sorry, little boy, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> stick kill. Wait, what? Uh, the <laughs> stick. Uh, I just grab stick. It's like, stick, don't. Dexter don't Dexterity. Do Dexterity check. To, we'll say you can sleight of hand it to grab oh. stick. All right, sleight of hand. I don't have disadvantage anymore. <laughs> Um, it's a 13. 13. I'm gonna, no, no, because I'm gonna be, I'm gonna just say that's a flat 10 DC, because it's, it's not oh, like, okay. it's not like it was a very surprising thing that this was gonna happen. I imagine when Glib stormed across the room, you were kind of expecting this sort of thing. So you able, you're able to kind of like whip your hand out, grab stick. The attendant looks horrified, of course. Uh, doesn't really <laughs> oh, say dear. anything, you, just kind of like stares you, at you. Right. I'm getting up you on have... the counter and in the guy's face and just go, Oh dear, you've done it now. You have upset Glib the God Drinker. Do you not know who this is? <sighs> I will drink you like a fucking Capri Sun. Now tell me where this percentage son of a bitch is. Glib has drank blood of God that was taking over Riftridge. I'm sure you heard of it. It was big news everywhere. And yes, this is our lawyer. Um... Mr. Goodbeard, and I am. <laughs> I am. I'm imagining Mr. Godrinker, so social definitely. media coordinator. Uh, this is going to be a very on. big event for Victoria. At, at this point, realization kind of dawns in the person's eyes. I think it seems that they like kind of realized who SG was. At least they still don't know who Glib is, uh, but they they realized that SG was it was this person that. Uh, Dramaticus has, has entered the exhibition match with. Uh, goes, well, let me let me call him for you. Uh, and they do the little like magical Good sending idea. thing that you know you've seen many people do, sort of the magical phone kind of thing. Uh, and a moment later, uh, the back the door in the back of the gift shop opens, swings open, and another attendant, similarly dressed, uh, kind of beckons you over. This motherfucker's got employees. Plural. <sighs> Once we get kind of more notoriety, we can also hire intern. <laughs> I don't oh, want man, an I... intern. This guy's <laughs> a pretentious bitch. Gl uh, Blob is kind of your intern <laughs> at this point. I mean, he's not working for the Kraken anymore. Blob is a associate. He is not my <laughs> intern. <laughs> anyway, uh, the the attendant, the second attendant, the one who is uh, who is who is taking you into the home. When you go, this is definitely like the actual entrance, like the the sort of lobby foyer area to uh the actual home of uh, of dramaticus i was uh, so sorry for all the commotion he'll be right down with you uh, sg was it yes this is s i am sg and then this is glib the god drinker and then this is mr goodbit he is lawyer i'm not wearing a dramaticus tie 
that I grabbed off a shelf. Okay. Uh, so uh, the attendant kind of. Oh, can I ask real quick? Is is Esther back? Stick was actively trying to kill the guy. I would say unless <laughs> yes. unless you deactivate. I didn't give stick, him the order yet, so it's just then fucking yes. Just... Just to be just holding the stick. Then yes. <laughs> okay, so uh, the attendant kind of nods, goes, he'll be right down, and then sort of walks walks off, like, leaving Clip, it there do for you a mind? Moment. Can you, like, call off the stick? Uh, yeah, stick, come. Just... I can't believe we're in Dramaticus's home. Uh, after... Good bit has been fucking ignoring everything happening in the background. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, probably yeah. for the best. <laughs> He expected this to happen. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm used to it. After a few more moments of waiting, it does take it does take him a couple of minutes to get there. He doesn't show up immediately. Uh, at the top of sort of the stairs to the second level, before he even comes into frame, you hear the signature. Ah, and then the uh, dramaticus, good vids, you know, favorite warrior, s- uh. s- kind of very obviously like show strides into view. Kind of like strikes oh a little God, pose at the top of the like stairs, that? and then just kind of like people just taking pictures casually. Oh no, you're like in his. No one else is here. Uh, kind of oh, like okay. jogs down the stairs. Goes, ah, SG here to finalize the details of our match, I assume. And uh, who are your associates? I can tell one of you has excellent taste. And he kind of gestures. The to name Goodbit. is Mr. Goodbit. The name is Mr. Goodbit. Pleasure to meet you. I've seen all your fights. I've come to the Victorian <laughs> Festival for for years and years and years. You're you're reign of champions uh, you're the best fighter i've ever uh, seen i aspire he he shakes your hand and then with his other hand kind of like reaches out lightly grabs your tie and like signs it real quick with a flourish and then just like <laughs> lets it drop again <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna all right thank you thank you like, remember when we were Good take a break not that you would ever need protection, but I do offer very lucrative services uh, uh, to protect and kill anybody if you so needed. Uh, Good uh, bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I'll keep you in mind, my friend. And he gives you a wink, and then he turns to Glyn and he goes, "Ah, and what about you, my fine frog man?" <laughs> Hi, Glib. Hello, Charm. Glib. I'm Dramaticus. I could tell. He kind of kind of nods and then uh, turns back to SG and goes, "So, uh, what have you what have you arrived here for? Specifically, I mean." Well, we never said when we were having battle and what kind of the terms of battle were. We just said that if I win, I get you get uh, I get to get a favor from you. Um, and you also agree that I could have backup as said in contract. Roll deception on that. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> yeah, I <have> to tell. <laughs> this is for the courts and only the courts. Is there any way I can give advantage by by any means? Uh, no need. That's a 27. A 27? I mean, I guess oh. I'll roll against it, but he's not... No, that's a... Uh, uh, you can tell he does not seem to remember the terms of the contract specifically. Gaslighting is my bread and butter. Yeah. I got <laughs> uh, he, he sort of... You can kind of tell, like, he, he assumes that the forgetting was definitely on... on him. He goes, ah, yes, of, of course, if you would like to make it a, a team match, I'm fine with that. I'm sure that's what we agreed upon. I'll uh, find some allies to fight with me. And uh, these two, are they they going to be your compatriots? Yes, they are my compatriots. This is Glebe Godrinker. You might have heard of him. Um, and this is my lawyer, Mr. Goodbeard, but he also is a good fighter. Pleasure to be fighting with you, Mr. Dramaticus. You're fighting him. You're, You're not fighting with him. You are on my uh, side. Uh, I'm fighting against you, Mr. Dr- of course. He kind of, kind of nods. Oh, all right. Uh, now, for, forgive me for not setting the date of the match. I wasn't expecting to enter into a formal contract. That's not usually how we do things around here, but I appreciate so it for sure. you just going to show up and say we're fighting now? Well, I, I was assuming that it would be organized through the gladiatorial organization once the, uh, once the festival began. But if you would like to sort it out, I'm sure we can make something work. <laughs> Sorry, just part of me just thought it would be so funny. He just showed up one day. It's like we're fighting now. <laughs> no, there's a little bit more kicks to it than that. Door. He's a well. Would you if like you, to fight? Was, if yes, you would like to do it that way, I'm. I'm more than willing. I, I'm always ready for a good spar. Well, I would just like to say something to you, Dramaticus, that I see right through you, and you are a very small shell of man. Roll intimidation hey, with advantage, actually. 
With advantage? With advantage. Ooh, I needed that advantage. That was a like... really funny thing that you just said. That was, I think that was a nat 20. You're on kidding my... me. Oh my god. You're... 20 plus... You did not just Damn. get another. another oh my god. Nat... Momo, I kid you not. SG, you you literally just said the most specifically targeted thing you could have said to this man. And then, <laughs> by pure coincidence, and then rolled a nat 20 on the intimidation. His <laughs> face drops instantaneously. The voice is gone. All of his confidence is just completely shattered. And he leans into you and goes, What? You heard me. You are a small shell of man and I will destroy you. He runs. He books it up the stairs. He <laughs> just starts running as fast as he can. Wait, Dramaticus, where are you? I cannot <laughs> for the life of me believe that, that... I did not tell you them... For context, chat, when you find out what that means, I did not tell the players anything about this character beforehand. I cannot believe that that was the insult that Momo decided to say. Okay. <laughs> I am so sorry for no, breaking your No, 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 no. Like That's that. amazing. I'm so happy. That was better leave. than anything I could have done. I want to lean over to Goodman and be like, hey, man, uh, I think... I can smell piss on your hero's tunic. I don't know if you might want to get a new hero. Goodbit, Goodbit, honestly, the whole, like, showmanship of Goodbit and why he smiles so much, I've now decided it's because he loves Dramaticus so much. So seeing Dramaticus, oh, oh, no. seeing Dramaticus, like, it break, because Goodbit never breaks. Goodbit never breaks. Seeing Dramaticus break, it's kind of like... Which is, yeah, that is the first time you have ever seen anything of that nature. Uh, and he just... Again, he doesn't know if he's confused or who, if he's lost respect. He runs up or, the stairs. Should, should, we, should we run after him? Or are your, we going to let him that's, get away? Or your what? call. That seems like a him thing. That he Let's just let, let's leave him to stew in, in that. I mean, we I did not see a just... of battle still. I just kind of was... <laughs> You know, the, can... the shit talking, I think they do that in like battles, they say mean things to each other, and then it's kind of like how they build hype, and I oh, guess no. I was it is. reading room wrong, I guess. Let him, let him stew in that. Let him stew in that for a bit. He seems like, uh, <laughs> we want to shake him up a bit before his battle. A good bit, uh, you need a drink or anything? I would like one, yeah. That'd be cool. Okay, oh, it's a good plan. I'll, I'll buy a Mind Flayer or something. I mean, that I'm sure that... Good. I guess, can we, like, kind of live here now? Because this is better than even my nice portrait. He, he didn't leave the house. This he went back. House. He <laughs> went right back upstairs. He didn't leave the... He didn't leave the house. So, is that not a weird reaction to, like, sort of normal thing to do between before battle? Should we go oh, up is, and I ask questions? Can I can I like roll perception to see if I can like piece together the puzzle pieces that I can see I'll here, or can I just piece together the puzzle pieces? You can roll. That was enough of a targeted thing. I'll. Um. You know what? You can roll perception to see, because there is a yeah. Okay. You you can all roll perception. I'll give you enough for that, if you would like to. We can all roll perception. If you if you would like to, you don't have to, but I would like to. Then yes, I'm rolling okay. fourteen. Like 14. That's a 15. 14 is not enough. I got an 18. 18. 18, 18 actually uh, definitely is. Uh, as you, uh, as you're, you know, Goodbit is, is paying attention to this. Goodbit just saw his, uh, his hero fold for the first time ever. Uh, and ever. as, as Dramaticus is booking it up the stairs, your eagle eyes, you know, ready to pick out any little detail that might be relevant to your job. Notice his foot clip through a stair. Very He's not fucking there. Oh. The, the whatever whatever sadness there was when he first dropped his facade is now more just like it just switched. Now it's like interesting. What you see, good beard. You do that thing. That this is this thing with your like. You got that face on you... your face when you do <laughs> yes. that like thinking thing. That's... Yes. SG. Yes. What kind of vibes did you say you got off of Dramaticus when you first met him? Like, I mean, I guess the best way to explain it is that he had this 
general very like fake vibe to him. I'm inclined to agree. I just saw a piece of his foot travel through solid mass as he was running up those stairs just now. Like he's not there? Some sort of illusion? Magic? Perhaps. I think it's time we investigate, but maybe stealth-wise. And SG is going to uh, shift into the attendant we saw earlier that went to go fetch Which him. one? Okay, the second. So the oh, second. Okay. Uh, the second. I don't... Wait, can we... Co- Hold on. Can I can I add something to that? As soon as I see SG shift, I'm like, oh, I see where this is going. Hey, guy! And try and call the, the guy back in. <laughs> where is... Uh, the attendant kind of pokes his head around a corner after a moment, sees an exact copy of himself, uh, and just kind of, like, pauses. Um... I'm going to cast hold person. Okay. Yeah, I was about to say, I think it's time for a hold person, Cliff. Oh, my goodness. Uh, all right, so that is a wisdom saving throw of a 16. All right, this is just a regular guy, so nothing incredible on stats. Yeah, it does not pass. Okay, great. Immediately, just as soon as he walks in, just frozen. Okay, uh, uh, since he was leaning and... You're going to spend some time with us, buddy. Since the uh, since the attendant was like leaning and poking their head around the door, they like freeze and then just fall over on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is. I'm gonna go over. Uh, before you fun. drink him, before you drink him, I'm not gonna drink him. To go. I'm not gonna drink him. Oh, okay. We still need him for later. I'm gonna walk up. I'm gonna grab him and I'm gonna hop on stick and be like, "Let me know when you're done," and then fly into the air. You are inside. Okay, well then, in that case, I'm just going to fly to the top of what I'm assuming is a very high ceiling. Yeah, it's like a three-story. Like, Okay, so you fly to the, yeah. the top of And the... then I'm just holding him over the side, and I'm gotcha. just like, even if you stop, if you move, I'm not very strong. Okay. So. Uh, I will also be joining you, SG, but you're on your own, and I go invisible. <laughs> nice, okay. Uh, well, you know what? I don't think this will be a very difficult battle. Anyway, I go, I go up the stairs. Uh, uh, yeah, are you trying to be sneaky? I don't think I have to be because I'm an attendant. Yeah, I was, I was just asking if you were or not. You don't no, need to be. I'll be like, I don't know if you want me to make stealth, but I am following invisibly. Yes, if you can uh, like stealth I, ahead to I'm see where his room might be. Do a stealth check uh, just to make sure you okay. don't trip or anything, but I, as the DM, know you're invisible, so I'll be taking the DCs mm-hmm. into account for all that. For sure, for sure. Um, That is a pretty good roll. Let's see. That is a 23. Oh, yeah. You're totally fine. You're totally fine. <laughs> okay. I'll say, that's a good um, enough roll. I'll say you were like, you kick the stairway that you saw the stair that you saw go through just to, like, make sure that that's really the, like, you're, you're in, in right, the investigation right, right. mode. Um, I guess I just would, if, if I'm going ahead first, I guess I would have, I can still talk while I'm invisible. Yeah. I would probably go ahead and try to find where. Dramaticus is first, and then go tell SG. So, it's not too difficult to find at least what seems to be Dramaticus's room, as there is one set of closed doors that is much more ornate than everything else in the area. You and Again, the doors are closed. You don't know if that's where he is or not. Right. I, I, I tell that to SG. Okay, so as the attendant, I go up to the door and I knock and I say... Um, Dramaticus, sir. Sorry, I can just. You know, the, the guy just spoke. Yeah, I, I didn't accent. do an accent for the. Uh, just regular Dramaticus, dude. sir, we have an appointment for you in 15 minutes for a meet and greet. Are you available? Uh, uh, just a minute. <laughs> the laugh is notably more nervous. Uh, but after uh, a moment of like, he he says just a moment, and it does take it just a second. But then he swings the door open. Like, actually, kind of slowly. Like, he, he opens the door a little bit and, like, peeks out and then swings the door open. With the confidence, the confidence is there, but, like, from the nervous laugh and, like, the peeking out. Like, you can tell he's still shaken, yeah. but the confident facade, as you now know it is, is back on. Is there enough room for me to squeeze into his room while he talks to SG? You're going to have to make a roll for it because he's pretty beefy, but uh, you mm. could try. I imagine this is, like, double doors, you know? Like, if I'm a big fancy room, he's only opened one. What 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 stat would that be? What's uh, your... Let's call it acrobatics. 
Acrobatics. Um, okay. I'm going to try and squeeze past him. Um, in hopes to go into dramatic kisses room. Oh, someone else in the chat, I wanted to adjust. Someone said, uh, is there a reason that I never go to the big camera? For some reason, having me on the big camera is glitchy when I do it through Skype. I have a button. Uh, where is it? I don't know where the button is. Uh, I have a button here that throws me to the main camera, but I have to do it manually, so I don't do it very often. Usually if I'm doing like longer narration or something, I'll do it. But anyway, uh, so what did you roll for, for getting in? 22. 22. Okay. So uh, you are able to kind of swing around into uh, Dramaticus's room. Uh, actually, I'm going to have you make another stealth check to sneak by him as well. You're able to get through, but okay. see if he notices you. For sure, for sure, for sure. Um, come on, we've been rolling hot. Oh, and we keep it up. 25. Wow, yeah. Good good bid. Really wants to figure this out. These are some motivated rolls, and it's working. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you deftly sneak by him. No contact with him. You know, you, you do it quietly. You do it effectively. You are now in the room. Uh, there's nothing too surprising in the room. It's big. It's fancy. It's filled with pictures of himself. Uh, but that's about it. Right. Arrogant know. son of a bitch. <laughs> I would like to... And you... If you want me to make another stealth check or something for this, I can. But I would like to rummage through any desks or nightstands or anything that he might have in there. Okay. Uh, I was going to... You don't... He's... Let's... What... Is SG continuing the conversation or is that all that she's doing? Um, I was going to ask him a question. Okay, yeah. Like, I was going to... Do, okay, do yeah, that. While they're yeah, talking, do I that. that. I want to see how long the conversation goes before he goes back into his room before okay. I say a good okay, to yes. look around for things. Okay. For sure. Um, Dramaticus, sir, before we go to your appointment, before your previous guests left, they did um, say that you didn't actually set a time for your battle, is it? Um, is there a particular time you want me to pencil them into your schedule between, like, meet and greets and, like, um, interviews? Oh, uh, no, um, I believe that SG is in the uh, is in the gladiator quarter. Just send somebody to go and uh, make her appointment work, as long as it doesn't conflict with one of my more major fights, and most of those are towards the end of the festival. Whatever she prefers is fine. All right, and is there, is there anyone... They said that you were going to phone in two companions, or compatriots, I think the word they used was. Um, did you want me to make any calls for you ahead oh sg you are literally asking the man to bring people <laughs> he said he, he was he would have just people, forgot right? he's dumb yes. <laughs> uh, he said he was going to bring people but at least now i know who they are and i can look into them okay no, no, no. we said we're gonna bring people uh, he didn't say he's bringing a posse. I'm going to say he gives you two names. I do not have other gladiators prepared at the moment, so I'll okay. come up with those if I need to. But uh, he gives you two names that you can search, and I will improvise some okay. gladiators when the time arises. Okay. Uh, okay, so is that the uh, the extent of the conversation, or are you stalling more? Um, I'm going to... Let's, let's keep damping it. Okay. Like... Bam, okay, bam. so you're meeting um, Bob Ski, Bob Ski and his family of three. Listen, the little one, Thomas, is a little bit afraid of you, so you have to be extra friendly with him. Is that okay with you? Oh, of, of course. I'm great with kids, except for the small ones. <laughs> well, he is quite small for his age, so you just have to be very careful I'll with him. give him the whole inspirational speech. I'll do the lifting yeah. him onto the shoulder. Oh, you know the whole bit. The kids love it, usually. Yeah. I mean, it is a halfling family, so you know they can be very <laughs> fragile. Uh, gentle, gentle, got it. Uh, All right. This conversation has gone on long enough that I'll cut over to Goodbid for a oh, bit. Okay. So, Goodbid, you're just... <laughs> I didn't have anything else. No, no, we might go back, yes. but we're going to do some, some Goodbid searching first. So, uh... Okay. What are you, yeah, this is a, you know, it's a fancy ornate bedroom of a rich, famous person. What are you looking through? I am looking through if he has any desks, uh, desk drawers, uh, nightstand drawers, just anything where uh, there's he a, might be hiding something. There's a wardrobe, there is a desk, there's like a chest, you know, normal. Yeah, we'll say those are the three things. Wardrobe, desk, chest. Okay. Um, I want to look, what kind, of, what kind of check do you want me to make for this? What are you doing first? Um, desk. Desk first, okay. Uh, desk yeah, stealth check is fine. Stealth check is fine. Check With, is fine. And I will again note that you're invisible and he's distracted and all that stuff. But. Yeah. For sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, 
That is a 16. 16 is enough for the sake of this. Uh, you open the desk, search around. Uh, it doesn't really seem... Nothing suspicious is notable. The, the funniest thing you find is there was a sheet of paper that he... It seems he was practicing his own autograph on that sheet. Um, nice. Otherwise, you know, there's some, <laughs> some information about, like, some fighters that he's going through and, you know, just, like, a schedule. Like, nothing, nothing wild. Um, well, Pocket can I, can the I autographs. telepathically connect with um, Goodbit and yeah. say two things? Goodbit, make sure you don't trip any MBM security <laughs> and also look for any information on me or you or Glib. Uh, okay, I will, I will add to that. Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything... No, there doesn't seem to be anything about any of you. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, no, there wouldn't be anything about any of you in there. Um, I guess next I'll do the chest. Uh, okay, so the chest, yeah. Uh, mm. Do another stealth check. Okay. Uh, 17. 17 is fine. Open the chest. It seems to store uh, weapons, primarily. Mm. Again, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, now, I was giving you sort of one check for each question that uh, SG had asked. Ah, so SG, you're gonna have right. to stall for another. If you if you if Goodbit wants to check the wardrobe, you're gonna have to stall for another uh, another bit. I'm gonna trip and hope he catches me. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna miss step going down the stairs. Oh, okay. I was the stairs are like farther off oh, down the hallway. They're not immediately oh, right okay. there. Yeah. I'm gonna. Tr I guess I'm gonna just trip. So you're just gonna like fall over. Yes. Oh. Okay. Um. I guess. That I'm would assuming be a... I'm carrying a clipboard. <laughs> okay. Sure. Uh. We'll say you pick that up somewhere. Uh. Okay. He got a fine dexterity save. Uh. So yeah. You you he, fall over kind of out of the blue. Uh. He looks confused. He catches you. Uh. He looks sort of confused. He catches you in in his hands. Uh. Kind of like stands you back upright. Oh, but sorry, sorry about that. Don't. These are new shoes. They don't quite fit. No, no worries. Oh, sorry. Uh, that's fine. That's enough for Goodbin to check the, the thing. So, <laughs> stealth check. Oh, my gosh. These stealth checks are killing me. Hey, you're sneaking you around. Go. That's all you got to do. 22. What do you mean these stealth checks are killing you? Most of them have I been mean, 20 plus. I know, I know, but eventually. Uh, and in the wardrobe, know, just... you do actually find something interesting. Because it okay. is empty. There is, There are no clothes in there. No armor, no nothing. Oh, is this a hidden door? Oh, no. Could I... Uh, could I further examine the wardrobe for any, like, hidden compartments? That's going to take inside? That's gonna take more stalling from SG. Oh. And since... Yeah, you're, you're going to have to stall or, or I leave. I mean... I got it. I got it. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sweating. So I keep getting it. I keep getting requests from, I guess. Oh my gosh, new found media to do almost like a. What did they say it was? They want to do like a merch shoot with you. Is that something I can pencil in on your schedule? Is there something I can cancel because your schedule is very booked with the coming festival? Uh, Dramaticus seems to be getting a little frustrated with the lines of questioning, <laughs> possibly because of him still being a little shaken. Uh, but you're not sure if he's just like this to his assistants. But he's like, oh, that's, that's fine. If my schedule is is available, you, you've you seen it. You can pencil in whatever you need. All right. They are going to, they want you to be a model for their new um, sweatpants, jerseys, as well as armor. Oh, right, right. Of course, we can make that work. Can I, okay. can I offer okay. some ideas to SG real quick? Please. You have psychic communications for um, sure. <laughs> yeah, M make a lot of small references to being small or, or tiny. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I will recall the insult that you specifically said, which is, I believe, I can see right through you. You're a small shell of a man or something like that. Make a, make a ton of references in, in what you're saying to, like, small businesses or the, 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 small uh, the clothing business. line runs a bit tiny or... Okay. Um, I just one one more tiny thing or something okay. like that. Just keep dropping small and tiny and see if it fucks with him. Oh, the annoying thing about new, annoying thing about this 
a brand is that their clothes run kind of small. So I'll just tell them to make the biggest they can because, you know, you are dramaticus and all of your clothes should be made bigger. But, you know, I don't know. These brands are ridiculous. Everyone wants to be smaller these days. It's crazy. Uh, you can see that that is starting to, to frustrate him. However, uh, I don't think it necessarily has the desired effect because he seems to, like, he starts sort of closing the door a little bit. Like, he wants to get away from the conversation faster. Oh. <laughs> I think, Glyph, that was a terrible plan. <laughs> Listen, I'm holding the motherfucker up by his neck right now. <laughs> I'm trying to figure things out. Uh, make, a, make a persuasion roll at this point, SG. Okay. Oh, 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 come on, digital dice, you have not failed me. Um, persuasion. All right, all right. That's a 24. Okay, 24. So uh, while he's still sort of trying to get away from the conversation, he does not outright leave yet. Uh, good bid, you can investigate the, uh, you can perception roll Let's on go. the wardrobe to find any further information. Perception roll, you got it. <laughs> That is a 27. 27. Oh. However, yeah. despite yeah. the good roll, there doesn't really seem to be anything of note. Uh, the wardrobe is empty. It seems to be a completely normal wardrobe. It doesn't seem to be a passageway. It doesn't seem to be a mimic. It's just empty. And though it's a kind of hard to tell this, like, there's no wear and tear on the inside. I'll see this is the, for your super high roll. It doesn't seem like it's really ever right. been used in any capacity. It seems brand right. new. Okay. I'm... Out of there, I can tell that. Wait, wait, wait! Uh, SG's... Before he leaves, can I be like, hide, hide in the hide in the thing and see if he does anything when no one's looking? And you psychic that to me? Is that yeah, she can. Yeah, yeah. he can pass it I through can... SG. Yeah, he can use SG yeah. as like a yeah. middleman. Um, uh, hide it. Yeah, uh, I get in the wardrobe, still invisible and close. Okay. Uh, all right. So you're in there now, uh, SG. Are you stalling more? I'm assuming you know what's going on since I the psychic. I assume SG can see that behind. Yeah. And either way, you have the psychic communication. <laughs> just she knows sees the happened. wardrobe open and close. Yep. Yeah, I'll just be like, well, thank you so much for your time. Uh, you do have, again, that meet, that meet and greet in, I think, wow, in about 10 minutes now. So just be down in time for that. <laughs> With the halfling family, remember? Kind of nods, gives you a thumbs up, and then okay. pushes the door closed. See you soon. Uh, uh, what are you doing, I guess? As, are you waiting outside the door? I guess we'll see what SG's doing first. Or are you going back to Glib? Um, I am going to... I'm not... I'm going to, like, wait a little bit down around the corner. Okay. Um, I don't want to be right outside the door. Can I make a little veto on what I said? I think I'm just going to stand in the corner. I don't even think okay. I'm going to go in the wardrobe. Okay, because you're... How so long does your invisibility last? Invisible. Up to an hour. Up to an okay. hour. Okay, you're fine. All and right. He, he's got at least... 10 minutes in there. Yeah, it, it's got it's, it's plenty of time. So, uh, when the door closes from the other side, with Goodman can see, Dramaticus lets out a sigh. Uh, it kind of like strides over to the bed and sits down on it. At which point, after a moment, his entire form begins to like disintegrate, like an illusion vanishing. It starts from the edges and uh, kind of shrinks inwards. Uh, as you can see, uh, it kind of starts from, like, you know, his limbs, his legs disintegrate into nothing. His arms, however, disintegrate, revealing a sort of glowing purple hands. They seem to be some sort of mage hand cantrip that he was using to mimic hands through an illusion. Uh, and as the entire illusion collapses, it reveals a small, maybe, like, one-foot-high wooden puppet sitting on a mage hand, <laughs> levitating itself in the center of what was the giant gladiator's form. And the tiny little puppet just goes. <sighs> Can, are we getting this feed from Good? It depends. Uh, I SG have no way of getting it to you. I don't no, you, uh, no, you, you can, can broadcast yeah. it to me, and I can just words, just it words. It's not like a camera feed, but just yes. words. So, like talking in my mind. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I just say. In my head, y'all, I don't know how to describe this perfectly, but he just turned into a wooden puppet. A carried a, an elaborate magical wooden puppet with various mage hands mimicking limbs. 
I'm not entirely sure what I'm looking at right Dude, now. Dude, don't fuck with us right now. We need actual info. I'm not. I never joke about business. <laughs> Good bit has never lied to us before. Good bit. Do you think now is time for said battle? No, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Let's wait to ex expose him in front of everybody. <laughs> So the uh, oh, this oh, so many things to say. This is so uh, uh, proud. This I am this is so, so personal. To me. <laughs> so yeah, now now you guys get why that all of every part of Momo's insult. I see right through you. Hey. You're a small shell of a man for the tiny little puppet <laughs> floating in the big illusion. It was the most perfect thing that you could have possibly said to a hilarious extent. Oh, but yeah, so this puppet, um, this puppet seems to be controlling, it looks like what, like four mage hands at once. Uh, from the way that the, uh, from the way that the illusion disintegrate, you can tell two of them are used to mimic hands. Uh, one of them seems to be like used sort of as a hoverboard that the puppet is kind of like sitting on and being carried around in the center of the illusion. And there's one that's just sort of floating around. You're not really sure what that one is used for. Uh, but after a moment, the puppet, you know, dismisses the mage hands and just like flops down on the bed and just kind of lays there. Wow. I am not making a sound until they, till he or it or whatever leaves for its meet and greet that doesn't exist and then I'm out of there. Uh, the puppet, while the puppet does not seem to like be capable of crying, it does start making like crying noises. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, now man. I feel good. Goodbid, all you hear in Goodbid's thoughts is, "This is just pathetic." <laughs> <laughs> What's this happening? Is so what is personal. What for am Goodbid. I even looking at? Is this, what is the fucking puppet jacking off? What are you fucking looking at right now, man? I think he's crying. The puppet? You heard me right. Uh, now I feel kind of bad. I was just doing some kind of. Like, this you, man has a gift shop fun. in his front room. I don't feel bad about <laughs> shit. My question is, is this always what Dramaticus was? Or is this what Dramaticus is now? Is this the real Dramaticus? Is Dramaticus oh boy, you're in his real room. name? There's nobody looking around. This is him. This is bad business. <laughs> But I think maybe wah, wah. this is a very powerful sorcerer to potentially have on our side. I'm not working with a man whose ego is this big. We have no idea how much of his personality is real or fake. I would say that beating him in battle would be a great way to get him on our side because he seems like the type. But if his body is fake, who's to say his personality, his, his ambitions? Okay, even... let, let me answer you that for you that right now, good bid. Would Dramaticus, the Dramaticus that you know, that you've been a fan of for so many years, would Dramaticus cry? He would never cry. Exactly! What this did you think of it fake. in... He's a phony, he's a fraud. What did you think of it in... How how does he say? A uh, good biz business sense. <laughs> sense. If we do not fight him publicly and humiliate him in front of a group of people, he, as a favor, is much more useful to us. If, if everyone knows he's not really that dangerous, he's not full dramaticus, then calling him in for favor is like calling in like another glib for favor. Oof. Hey! <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> Damn. I will drop this motherfucker and we're all gonna have problems. I don't think Dramaticus cares that much for his uh, workers, so I don't think there would be big issue there. You worker that you're disguised as right now? Yes. Uh, okay, I still I think we should see the fight out. through. Dramaticus just saw this guy, and if he walks downstairs and he fell from a great height in the fucking great room, Every, everyone's gonna start questioning because now he's gotta hide a body because I'm not hiding this motherfucker. I want it to be known since I'm in a room alone. I'm saying this all out loud while I'm talking, while okay. I'm thinking. Okay, uh, is how long does whole person last? Um, not too stupid long, but also I told him if he moves, I'll drop. Well, no, him, I, so. yeah. My question is, can can this person speak? 
um, concentration of up to a minute. Okay. So it's been. So this it, has he, been he, he definitely. Talk. And you said all of this out loud. Yeah. All of it in within earshot of him. All, okay, I'm, so, I'm like. So you. I'm yelling in my head, but whispering out loud because I'm. I'm imagining glib has the same thing as me that he can't hear his own words in his and head. everything so. that you have said including lines such as what is the puppet jacking off in there have been said <laughs> yes. out loud at at this point the the person who you are dangling kind of goes, excuse me what yeah. on earth are you talking about it doesn't could fucking concern you did i say you could talk i think it does concern me a little bit i will drop you if you say one more fucking Look, thing I, I don't i don't want to be a problem if there's something wrong i'd like to help i let go i let go why <laughs> you psycho uh okay you let go of him uh i guess that's that's damn what's the damage from falling three stories uh, I Glib's a man of his fucking All world. Right. I told him if he I said like one more thing, off he's top, dead. That's he's dead. like 3d6. I'm ch- yeah, I'm checking it. Uh, it's... it's like a d6 for every 10 feet. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's right. So right. that's like... Oh, wow. That's barely any damage, actually. They got... He's fine. Yeah, they got lucky. Uh, like, they, they... Nothing seems broken. They're, they're fine. Uh, they got really low damage rolls. So they get dropped okay. to the ground. Can I fall on top of him to make sure he doesn't move or run or scream or anything? Uh, okay, yeah, you could just drop drop on top of him again. I'll add a little bit more damage for that. But again, those are super low rolls. Uh, yeah. So this person drops. They actually kind of like they don't land on their feet, but they don't you know collapse. But then a frog falls on top of them. Uh, <laughs> you know, pinning them to the ground pretty effectively, at least for a little bit. Grab. I'm grabbing his mouth too because I don't want him to scream and alert anybody. The, through through the hand, kind of goes. I'm not going to tell anybody. I want to help. Uh huh. A glib, mm-hmm. This person I'll probably be- makes like minimum wage. It's not worth telling anyone. Well, I'll <laughs> fucking believe that he's not going to say anything once y'all get back down here again. All right. About the puppet. I'm ignoring yes, him at this point. Knows I'm just waiting. I don't know what's going on. Hey, did you know that your boss is a puppet? No! Keep it that way. Okay, now he didn't know. Oh my god, Quib. But good bit. You see my my view that it is more financially better if I if he is not exposed in front of everyone and everyone still thinks he's very dangerous. But I understand that it is that very personal advantage. for you. We could definitely use it to our advantage, for sure. How about we... I mean, we're all here right now, and he's waiting in the room. Um, we could lie and say that we knocked out this fucking guy to get in here. And you could say... You could just fake that it wasn't you and just say that we know. Yeah, I think we can do that i just because if we bring this dude's body up there if i drag this motherfucker up there but like passed out or something are you all saying that we want to confront him about being a puppet right now i think that might be the best do we want to do it in front of everybody where it'll be humiliated and then all of a sudden he's worthless or do we want to do it right now and make him throw the fight tomorrow so then we have the benefit of being the strongest fighters in the fucking world and now he works for us Good yeah. bid undoes his invisibility. Oh, very... what? Holy shit! Wait, that was... <laughs> okay. Uh, and he goes, how did dramatic is? Uh, the puppet screams. Uh, and <laughs> just very, very quickly, uh, the full dramaticus illusion just sort of quickly <laughs> manifests again. Uh, it's sort of like a little bit wrong, and then it like quickly reshuffles back into position. Oh no! Maybe you know no where need, we no are, need, and no I just need. rush. I like. Can I? I can I? Oh my gosh! Can I? Uh, Misty step in there. Uh, is Miss? I don't know. Is Misty step sightline only, or is it the uh, location that you like? No, you know. I think it's. I did see inside of the room. Yeah, I imagine you could. Um, but check the spell yeah. text. Just, I, think, I think I can. I'll, I'll allow it. It's, you know, it, if if it's like two feet to the other side of a door to a room that you've seen yeah. the inside of. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm attempting I want to know intimidation here. I am now having here. to have the moral battle of if I should kill this guy or not. Because nah, now, just let him go. 
if we let him go, there is a potential he's not only going to tell people our fucking secret plan to keep this shit moving, but also he now knows that Dramaticus is a puppet and can start telling people. This dude could be a problem later. I'm not going to That is like, like a teenager that... I'm going to do this good! Wait, that is like a teenager that makes minimum wage. Who's going to believe him if he tries to claim that the biggest warrior in the in like this whole in Par Parnia Parian is a puppet made of wood? Okay, um, he's going to sound before, crazy. Before running upstairs, I'm gonna lean into him and say, "If you tell anybody about this, I just want you to know I have drank one god, no two gods, and have three on call." If you say fucking anything, I will hear it. If you fucking step out of line without me knowing it, I will find you, and you will be nothing more than a shell of a man made of fucking bones and skin. Do you understand? Uh, intimidation check. I want. I just I guess just do the okay. intimidation check regardless, because it'll be funny if you roll uh, roll low. That was good. Oh, you can have an advantage because uh, that was 15. a good speech. Okay. Okay, advantage. So I get two. All right. Eighteen. Eighteen. Yeah, uh, this this dude is terrified. Uh, just absolutely <laughs> terrified of me. You also get the sense, like, they really had no idea what was going on. Uh, they just, this is all happening completely out of the blue. They still don't even really know, like, what you're talking about. They've just heard you say things like puppet. Um, but yeah. they're definitely not oh, no, doing I know. anything. I know yet. he only has half the story, but even then, I don't want him sharing that yeah, shit. Yeah, half is generous. Uh, regardless, yeah. though, they, they, they don't, they're not going to do anything. Uh, so, yeah, what are, what are you doing? And then we'll, we'll go, we'll cut back okay. into the room. I'm letting him go. Okay. I let go of his mouth. I get off of him and I just say, leave. And backs away, not out of the building, but like back to the room where they yeah. came from. Where they came from. Yeah. And then I, I casually walk up the stairs and just walk in. And you just, okay. Like, just So the sequence of events is good bid just appears out of nowhere. SG appears out of nowhere, and then the door opens and Glib just kind of casually walks in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which yeah, is a very right. good vibe. Oh, right. Stick is still up in the air. And then I say stick, and I want stick to burst through the wall, so it's a little, just, just a like little a bit pull. of drama. Okay. Yeah, just... <laughs> so all this is happening. Uh, I should know, SG and Glib, you don't see Puppet Dramaticus yet. He has already reformed his illusion before you guys get there, but he is, like, standing there, like, in a battle pose. Obviously still yeah. looking more scared than you've ever seen him before. Of course. Just kind of like frozen in Drop it in tiny, place. we know. I, yeah. I would as rather as not. Starts, as soon as he starts putting himself out together, I'm like, oh, there's no need, there's no need. I've already seen everything. Now, we just want to have a chat. Can, I, can I mental talk to, to SG and be like, yes. can, you, can you like illusion some fire in my hand or something? I, like, press to digitate a small flame. Uh, yeah, dr uh, and Dramaticus doesn't like that. Doesn't He doesn't like any of that. It was, mm -hmm. oh, that's, I'm not going to do anything. Hold him down. We can talk through this normally. Like civilized that's people. That's okay. That's all we want. We just want to have a conversation. We just want to make sure that we're all on even footing here. Now, Dramaticus. All right. First things first, Just on just on a basis level, We'll get to you being a puppet in a second. Whenever we have our battle, you're going to throw it, and we're going to win. That's step one. Step two, you will be on call for any favor that we need per contract. And step three, if you don't do any of these things, unfortunately, the legend of Dramaticus will crumble as soon as they find out just how small you are. Dramaticus looks horrified once again. Uh, obviously very conflicted at this, you know, bad choice that you've put before him. He doesn't really say anything, but what you now know to be his illusion reformed kind of like slowly nods. Now, excellent. What's up with the whole puppet thing? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hold on. Before before we get your, your uh, anything. Hey, good, but you got any of those contracts around? Of course. <laughs> I'm, asking open. The, I'm asking um, the DM a question yeah. here. So is Dramaticus's real form like the same size or smaller than Glib? Oh, smaller. It is a, oh, it a, is a toy puppet. He's small. He's a it toy. Is a, oh, right. It is a toy wooden puppet. It's like a foot tall. 
Like, like oh, I kind of imagine, like, you know those, um, those little sort of, like, uh, I don't know what they're called. Like, the little wooden people that, like, that, like, artists use for, like, pose reference and stuff, those things. Oh, I imagine it Lord. sort of like that. Like, he's tiny. He's, like, a, he's, he's tiny. Okay. It's like that, but with, like, um, a face, a face in it. I'll have to get art of him done since now you've, you've seen him so quick. But, uh. Okay. Um. <laughs> Good vid, can you write up a contract that very specifically says all of this? Like, if you step out of line for a second, or if you don't throw the fight, we'll tell everyone? I'll just add it to the clauses of our current existing contract. Got it. You're not going to bring that up in any legal case, are you, Mr. Tiny? Just kind of shakes his head. Good choice. Anyway, good bit. You had questions. So, who... Are you really? I am exactly who you think I am. Just not. There's a little more to the story, I suppose. I will burn this fucking room to the ground. <laughs> I, I thought Dude, you. Oh well, don't God. you already know? Take it down the notch. Don't you already <laughs> you know? I mean, just, that one points at SG seems to know exactly what was going on right from the get go. Yes, that was. You give bad vibes. It was very specific wording. Are you telling me that was just a coincidence? Yes. No. Kind of. <laughs> maybe. Or maybe we're insanely powerful wizards and mages. You have no idea. I mean, kind of both at this point. Uh, Dramaticus kind of sighed. Was, well, I, I mean, what do you want to... What, what do you need to know? Were you always this... Small. I, I, I. Or did you do something to the real dramatic? I regret to say that this was always my appearance. See, I told so you. So it's all been a lie. <laughs> these, these, these battles. He kind of like you can actually see him like kind of draw himself up a little. I mean, this is still illusion form, but he kind of draws himself up a little bit, seeming to take some level of confidence in what he's about to say, even in a, even in, you know, with his secret being exposed. He goes, I mean, I wouldn't consider it a lie. Every fight that I've won, I've won on my own power. It's just not the power anyone thought it was. Can I juke him out? Can I just, like, and see if he moves? <laughs> <laughs> sure. I want to I want to see if he fucking flinches. Intimid just because he's like, I won all of my fights. Intimidation he... check. It. Dude, so many people in chat are yelling about how he fights. It's funny because there is a way, but... Damn it! <laughs> What'd you get? I got a 10. A 10? Uh, actually, it's, the, the confidence in that thing seems fairly fairly real, and Dramaticus does not flinch back at that. Hmm. Respectable. It's okay. Honestly, so Dramaticus... He is a good fighter. He's just been lying about... What he looks like. ...physical aspects. Mm -hmm. All right, Dramaticus, I'm going to be honest with you. Your personality is not great. But I don't think that being small is really a bad thing. You are a very powerful mage, it seems. Uh, Dramaticus kind of deflates a little bit at that. He goes, I, I thought people liked it. A confident warrior. I mean, it's, it's a person. Oh, a I love it. Yes, the, the, the businessman likes it. It's... A it's a persona that I, I enjoy. It's a gift shop in your living room. Look, I was... I, I, this is what I was made for. I, I was in shows. My name is Dramaticus. I'm an actor. Wait, who made you? <laughs> I love that look of realization on Panda's face when he got the name. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was made by an old wizard years ago. I was in shows for a while, but I wanted more. I wanted to do things on my own power, and so I entered this arena. It worked out, so I stayed. Uh, what's the wizard's Lib. name? Hmm? What's the wizard's name? Uh, to be honest, I don't have one on hand. Uh, I wasn't Damn. expecting okay. this to no, go. No, no, no. I wanted to know if it was like Mystery Man. It is no, no. It is not Callisto. Be, it is not right. Callisto. Be like you, motherfucker. No, uh, actually, I will say, uh, it was. It is a wizard from the other side of the continent. Actually, I'll say it's a wizard from uh, Abelio. So nowhere. Um, Isn't nowhere Abelio near. the the farm? Yeah, I'll go ahead and say um, Abelio is known for using like wood constructs in their farming. Uh, so it makes sense that someone from Abelio would create uh, would create a, a wooden puppet that was animate in some form. 
And it also makes so sense why... you're a why... dancing tractor. <laughs> I... Well, can I some can I ask for Blob? Glib, yeah, I was gonna Blob. say, can we summon Blob so we can? Because we're here to investigate. This yeah. Thing. So you summon. Uh, oh, right. Yeah. You summon yeah, Blob in. Blob. You summon Blob in. Uh, Blob kind of kind of floats around dramatically. Dramaticus kind of like watches him anxiously, but doesn't really do anything. And then Blob kind of floats back to Glib and goes, "Not him." Uh, what does that mean? Shame. It means it, we've been duped. This is red herring. Hmm. So, it looks like Damn. Dramaticus was never really that dangerous, and it's just kind hey, of I, insecure. I, 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 I'm dangerous enough. Like I said, I do fight. I still have fire, Tyson! Doesn't love the fire. I, like, dispel the, the illusions. Like, <laughs> relax. He's just on something right now. I don't know what... <laughs> He's in a mood. Whole issue with him. He's in the mood. Ignore <laughs> him. Dramaticus, there's no need to pretend to be a big person when you are a strong mage that is tiny i mean i guess by all means keep up illusion but this we're we're not going to fight you like there's no need but i do i would like if you stuck to a different contract and i just ask like good bid to drop a contract where we can just call on him for favors but we don't have to fight him uh no now normally dramaticus seems like reluctant to sign this but given the situation not really hard to persuade Dramaticus to do what you want. Uh, somewhat unsettlingly, uh, one of the hands, instead of moving his arm to uh, to sign the contract, one of the hands just kind of drifts out of the illusion and signs it that way. It's not, like, Amazing. creepy looking. I mean, it's just a mage hand appearing. But, like, knowing what it is, it's a little weird. We've seen Polnaros do Like, he's totally now. Hannah Montana. Hey, hey there's <laughs> horror in this campaign much later. But, uh... And I, and I tear up our previous fight contract and... Yeah. Yes, we don't need to fight. I have no idea how illegal that one was. You got we got yeah. lucky with you on that. This one. is actually a good thing. He doesn't. Uh, he doesn't. You know, comment on that part of things. He goes, look, just don't don't blame me for that. You've seen how this city operates. They, I don't think they would have taken too kindly to a a puppet beating some of their strongest warriors. Had to keep up appearances. <laughs> I want to drop the intimidation angle immediately. Just be like, hey, dude. It's fine. We get it. The no rapid worries. vibe yeah. shift. Dramaticus does not trust the <laughs> rapid vibe shift for a second. And actually looks more worried. <laughs> Genuinely, <laughs> Dramaticus. Don't, don't worry about it. Kind of We've like had, we had that shit before. Before. We got a whole operation about it. It's called, we, we got, we understand. We've been there before. You're cool, man. We get you it. Know. Don't worry about it. Just remember, we need to call you. Yes. You'll be there. Call and you'll be there. You know, at first I was going to be really mad and upset today, but, you know, after seeing everything and you answering my questions, I actually respect your showmanship even more, uh, given that you're not even a guy. At that, you're, you're a little Dramaticus man. sighs and drops his illusion again, revealing his true form, which I should note is this is the first time that SG and Glib have actually seen it. He's so cute. Oh my god, you're time. so small. <laughs> I would think Glib would get along with this tiny guy who's trying to scare people. That's like Glib's whole thing. No, yeah. I'm surprised. No one's Yeah, he's me. real so tiny. He's a little dude. Shit. He just like kind of fits in your hand. Like, a little, oh, yeah. So like I said, he, so he is tiny. a like, little one foot tall puppet that is levitating himself on a mage hand. Like that's how he gets around is he's floating on a mage hand. You're so, so fucking itty like, bitty. Uh, I didn't think it was Dramaticus, possible. do you not understand how strong you would be in battle? Because no one can see you to hit you. You're very small. Yes, that's kind of how I do think. Have you seen me fight? Actually, no. I had no idea. I've never Many seen a time, fight. Yes. Good, uh, I heard about you kind of like famous, but never seen uh, the video. So, so uh, good bid. Roll... Roll history or insight, whichever is higher. Let's see. Definitely insight. That is a 17. 17 is enough. Thinking back on Dramaticus's fights, you kind of realize that, like, this makes sense. Recalling that his whole thing is, like, at the beginning of the fight, he just sort of dances around and doesn't get hit. Before doing something, you don't know Never what. Never gets hit. Uh, but, like, thinking back on how he's fought before, like, it makes sense that he's a tiny guy in an illusory, like, suit of sorts. 
Mm. At least for the first time. You don't know how he's like hitting people, but Right. Even if he got hit, it would just follow up with that. Go through him. Yeah. So like if if all you are are mage hands and you're actually just this itty bitty hand sized being how the fuck do you win? Uh, oh, that's a, a excellent question. I suppose I can talk about it. Demonstrate on glib. He's almost indestructible. It'll be a... Uh... Demonstrate on stick. <laughs> stick is indestructible. I am a squishy little frog. Man. It'll be good to discuss fighting tactics. I don't get to do that very often. That, here, he reforms his illusion uh, and kind of goes up to glib and goes, Hit me. Gladly. Swing stick. So uh, you swing the stick. Uh, it kind of... It sort of like kind of goes through a little bit and like blocks the hit uh at that point dramaticus drops the illusion uh and you can see sort of how his mage hand system works he controls four of them two of them are his actual hands one he floats on and you can see basically it seems like his fourth mage hand he uses for impact the fourth mage hand floats Ah. around the inside of the body and like makes things stop when needed to make it look uh, to make the illusion look real okay Uh, but then he reforms the illusion kind of pushes the stick away uh, and you see him kind of like flex. And he goes, try it again. Okay. Swings you swing again. again. And it is like hitting a rock. The body seems totally solid now. Uh, and he goes. That's so cool. Yeah, he goes, <laughs> That's so cool. Uh, at that point, the illusion drops again. And he goes, are you familiar with, uh, I don't know if any of you have met any barbarians, but they're, uh, they're raging. It's sort of similar. I can, I can give my, my illusion physical form, but only for limited periods of time. So I, uh, I dance around, do some showmanship, you know, um, dodge hits, block them when I need to. But then when it's time to finish, I can power myself up, strike a final blow, and there we go. It's all in the timing. It's basically a barbarian arcane trickster multi-class that I customized. That's nice. Cool as hell. I like that. That's smart. I have a different kind of respect for you, Dramaticus. Still a fan. Still a big fan. Uh, dra- I like this Dramaticus more than the, like, big eagle one. Uh, it kind of just like uh, thank you. <laughs> yes, you still are, still are under contract, so I want to be clear with that. Under contract, but we can add a clause that says we can hang out as friends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I know what he kind of nods. Today. He's like, uh, all right, I suppose I can't argue with that. It has been a while since anyone's known my form. Though I should ask, you had your little squid. Scan me? What was? The, what are you here for? Oh, we're looking for rogue gods. What? Yeah, yeah. 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 We have a tendency to murder <laughs> gods, kind of and someone's now. doing that uh, outside of this. What, I I drank a god actually. We all collectively killed mm-hmm. killed him, and then I That's drank true. that motherfucker. And now there's another guy who's going around killing gods, and we just wanted to make sure that wasn't you. I. I cert no, definitely not. Uh, don't worry. Yeah, we can we can see that now. That's <laughs> yes. You're not you're not a threat. It's okay. So do you eat and drink, or uh, no need? Does that just rot the wood? Uh, this is, I, I mean, I function largely like so you're in... like a wooden puppets. So I guess we call you a, a, a sort of a construct by mm. some means. Uh, yes. Interesting, interesting. And you've never thought of potentially upgrading your actual physical form? I mean, I'm not sure how I would do that. I mean, can't I mean, you just I'm not go put your head on, like, con- a bigger body? Yes, I'm can't you just go to your, your dad and ask for a bigger one? We're not on the best of terms. Ah, uh, I get it. I got daddy issues, too. Yes. We we also knew a guy that had daddy issues, but he might be dead or somewhere we don't <laughs> really, know. Yeah, really it's just left. Yeah. <laughs> Canyon really Canyon ticked him off and he he left <laughs> to be included at my will, I guess. Wait, hold on, I still haven't seen that episode. Did he just fucking uh, fuck so off? Like, yeah. he got annoyed, uh took the skull and booked it, basically. So he did oh. take the skull. Oh, okay. So the skull and the him skull are and him gone. are just yeah. gone. They okay. are in my toolkit if needed. <laughs> were they still in the the chaos yes. dimension, or like yes. where were they? Okay, so they're just great. We're gonna have to fight another Polnaris at some point. That's great. Maybe have fun. <laughs> have fun. <laughs> Go get him. 
But, I mean, this was a very fun conversation, actually. I'm glad we did not fight you, because you were kind of cool dude when you're not kind of showboating for people. Also, I preached, sh- also, you don't actually have a meet and greet in, like, 15 minutes. Uh, that was me pretending. Also, you were definitely going to have to fi- have to hire a new staff. Yes, that's, that's a possibility. Did you kill anybody? I- no no no, no! 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 For no, once, no. I just threatened his life. <laughs> uh, I just put put the fear of multiple gods into into one of your staff and told him to run. Yes. So he might still be running if I'm not I'm not particularly sure. But you definitely are gonna want to check on him. Yeah, like maybe have to pay for a few therapy sessions. Okay. Also, I did attack the dude in the front room. So you might also need to check him as well. Yes. And you guys said you had killed gods? Yes. Yeah, we're not good people. <laughs> they deserve they, to die, were I would they say. Bad gods or I would say so, yeah. He was really yeah. in the order. We got a lot of dudes that are really into uh, chaos and he wasn't. At this so. point, realization kind of dawns on uh, on the well, the puppet-like face, it's kind of hard to see, you know, emotion on it. But a little bit. It has, like, very limited movement. Uh, but real, mm-hmm. you can kind of see realization. Done. As rem- Dramaticus did know, like, where SG came from. Did not know specific, uh, her specific role. But, like, yeah. it kind of now crosses Dramaticus's mind that, like, maybe you guys were not just involved in uh, the Rift Reach incident. But maybe you were, like, at the core of it. Possibly. Uh, and this sort of contextualizes a lot of what's going on. So, uh, and he kind of, after sort of pausing for a moment to process all this, he goes, You're trying to prevent another incident, then, I take it. Exactly. More or less, yes. Damage control before Not the damage. Exactly, happened. but. Uh, Dramaticus nods and kind of like, you can see him kind of getting excited a little bit. Uh, and after a moment, his illusion reforms, like, big, kind of cheesy grin on his face. He goes, like, so it's, it, it's actual heroism stuff, then, that you're, that you're doing. Wait, is this All Might? Uh, it is vaguely, <laughs> vague, I actually, I will say, I have not actually seen a lot of My Hero, so I did not, this was not inspired by All Might, but after I created the character, I was like, this is kind of similar. Uh, this, but I have, I have only seen, like, All season Might. one of My Hero, it was years ago. So this was not an, a directly gonna... All Might inspired character, but the similarities are there. I acknowledge that. Heck yes. When he said, "Is this like actual heroism?" I'm gonna go. I'm gonna put big ass quotes around <laughs> that uh, because most of what we do is crime. Yeah. But heroism when convenient for us. Heroism when convenient. That's a good way to put yes, it. Yes, I would agree. Actually. Anti heroism. We accidentally. Yeah, it took you like four tries to get to anti heroes, which is exactly what you are. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is. Where it's like we do mostly oh. crime, but then accidentally at the end of it, we end up saving the day. So I mean, kind of a little bit. This is a perfect yeah. opportunity for me to uh, to to bring up something that I meant to bring up in the finale of season one, and it completely slipped my mind. Uh, but this is totally something that dramatic. <laughs> Heroism is a strong word. Uh, so he kind of goes. So do you guys have like a like a like a team name or anything like an adventuring party code name or anything cool like that? I guess like we're not a party. Like, we don't like each other. I would like to call us the party of chaos. You know. Okay. <laughs> I feel like we go by many names. That's too hard to pick. I swear to God, if you say God for us one more time. <laughs> Just cram that name in there as many places as you can. What do. are we? Some yeah. kind of god? <clears throat> oh, when we said it the first time, I think four people in chat made that exact joke. Like, immediately. Yeah. I'd swing. I'd swing on Goodbid the second that he's like, what are we? Some kind of god <laughs> force? Glib would just do stick kill. <laughs> okay. So, you all give differing answers, which, uh, which Dramaticus kind of takes as a no. Uh, he goes, well... Uh, I'm happy to be on call for a, a noble task such as this. It would be good to do something actually heroic for a change. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm just saying, You're if we ever get a guest, can the guest please play Dramaticus? It's open. 
It's it's a it's a it's a possibility. I would yeah, I would have to like write up a couple extra stats for it. But yeah, it's uh, we'll it's doable. We'll see. Dramaticus is I mean, there. If, if if Evan wasn't so good as Dalkus, I would have been like Evan would be perfect for Dramaticus. <laughs> but. I would be so terrified to figure out what Zalkus has been up to. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's something. That's something, right? Well, it seems we've gotten all the answers we've come for. Yeah. I mean, SG, you want to just hit up Propus and be like, portal us back, or? Yeah, I mean, we've got the very sound Wait, concept. hold on. Yeah. Wait a minute. This place did have energy coming from it, right? That's why This is here. true. Have you been in contact with a god recently? There's so many jokes I want to make, but I'm not going to make. I'm not going to make any of. I'm not going to make any walk with Christ jokes about Dramaticus. Uh, oh my God. Regardless, uh, only the one true. Yeah, one. God, you'll probably meet something like that at some point in this campaign. I can't. I won't be able to resist. But uh, Dramaticus, no, I don't. I don't think. I mean, there are there are plenty of rituals going on during the festival. Also, if anyone's noticed that I'm doing the voice less dramatically, that's on purpose. He's got a little bit of it, but I'm not doing the full voice when he's not in his full persona. Uh, but so, you guys, I mean, there are plenty of rituals that go on during the festival. If, if there were gods at play, I wouldn't be surprised about it, but... Our... Yeah, but have you physically seen one? Trust me, you'd know. No. Out of game... Okay. I don't know if you want me to make some sort of arcana check, but... Have we been fully explained, like, why he has so much god energy on him? I know he spe- Slob uh, just said... He doesn't. There was god and en- oh, There was, there was uh, primordial energy in the city. I see. Okay, and you assumed it, that it, it was his. Uh, if, I will say, mm. if you... I'll, I'll give you, like, an insight check for this. The You can kind of guess that the reason that it, uh... Mm. It seemed vaguely similar to that of Prophet's was just because it was illusion magic, the general thing of, like, things not being what they it, seem. That kind of so we... same essence, but not from the same source. Okay. Re- recanting my previous statement, then, I say, uh, so mm. we still don't know what's causing this godly energy in, what's this place called? Perion. Perion? Perion. Perion. Well, now we're shit out of luck. No. That is very true. Should we ask this question in uh, SG's terrifying ass security locked room, uh, away from open ears? Yeah. To be fair, this place is probably more private than than uh, the gladiator. I mean, quarters. open ears as in. I mean, yeah, he's the only. I mean, open ears already, as in. You've already said everything to him by now. Is yeah. The thing. It's kind of. Yeah. Uh, I don't want it. I don't want him talking about where where we're going or what we're doing because I don't I still don't trust the slimy fuck. So I trust him. <laughs> I th- That's I good trust for you. him too. Glib doesn't trust shit. I ask, <laughs> I go, "Okay, Grammaticus, let me ask you this. If one was to go looking where where would you say is the most godly place in Perian?" Oh, well, there's a there's a there's a temple, of course. I mean, there are many temples throughout the city. It's a large city, but of course, one temple where a lot of the uh, a lot of things are going on is the temple of the the god of victory. Of course, as the the whole festival is is generally centered mm. around that concept, there are lots of lots of things going on there. Is the god of victory like a real person or just kind of concept? Are they present for the festival? Uh, the that first question he points at SG is a little too philosophical for for me at those <laughs> times. I'm not qualified to answer that one. <laughs> Uh, well, good, enjoy. good bit. Uh, no, not usually, but in, in some sort of, you know, spiritual capacity, perhaps. Mm-hmm. In, in in the sense you're talking about as in some sort of monster or somebody rampaging around. Uh, no, nothing like that. I would also like to remind my compatriots that the first god that we met was in a cabin. That is true. true. I feel like... Going to the temple to the god of victory wouldn't be a terrible idea. Mm, I kind of have to agree with that. If there's gods, mean better than nothing. If there's gods around in the mortal realm, I feel like their temple would be the first place they'd go. Okay. Uh, hold on, let me pull up a campaign notes thing here really quick. Uh, but yes, uh, so Dramaticus kind of yes, I can show you the way if needed. I don't know how familiar with the city you are. 
I don't think I'm that familiar. Uh, I just stick around. Yeah, no, you probably, yeah. you probably wouldn't be. I was just having him say that for giving, you know, letting me stall for, sure, for, for a sure, second for sure. as, I, as I pulled up my notes here. Uh, all right, so, uh. yes, okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, uh, unless you have anything else to say to Dramaticus here specifically, he will show you to the temple. Would love that. Great. Good choice. Uh, and, and as he's... Okay, so he starts to go in his full illusion, of course. He kind of turns around and he goes, I think this goes without saying, but please keep the, um, the, the, the puppet situation between us. I do still have some level of, uh, you know, facade to keep up. Oh, we know. That's why we're bringing you along. Of course. You... Uh, keep the god killer shit on lock. Hmm? I mean, I offered to come. You're not bringing me along. Whatever. We both... <laughs> we both got secrets. Glyph is just on one today. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Glyph had a bad no, week. I'm Glyph just, had a bad I want week. To be, first of all, he's still pissed that he's a frog forever. And second <laughs> of all... Still mad about oh, that. Still mad about that. And second of all, I want to intimidate the greasy fuck who's got a bunch of shit in his front room. That is... It, he's not with that. <laughs> he has a gift so, shop on the first floor does, of his mansion. He does have a gift shop on the first yeah, floor Glyph of his mansion. Glyph does not like this guy, for one. Which is why he's so much like... <laughs> Fuck you, man. And two, he's he's still very mad and very on edge. It's been a week. It's been a week for him. He was high. It's you guys were on vacation or like training with cool gladiators and stuff. Glib was hiding in his room. Yeah. Terror, scared yeah, out of I've his mind. I've been vacation. I've been. I am very much on edge, which is why Glib is in a mood yeah. right now. <laughs> it is very much like I am. I've had some shit in the last week. Okay. <laughs> Should have just gone on vacation like the rest of us. I had someone die in my head. Oh yes, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> but if you were on vacation, it would have been a little bit less traumatic, no? I was actively drunk when it happened. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was a time. Uh so I'll assume you guys after after this conversation, I assume you want to have that relatively in private. You guys head back out yeah. uh, and start traveling through the city again. Now, you do attract a little bit more attention this time, seeing as you are accompanied by a celebrity. But, uh, but yes. sort of in that same vein, like, it kind of acts as a sort of effective disguise because nobody's paying attention to you guys. Uh, they're just paying attention to, yeah. to Dramaticus. Uh, you do, like, his movements kind of make a little bit more sense uh, now that you've seen him, like, the way that he sort of interacts with fans and stuff, like, if you're looking for the, if you specifically know, like, how his body works, you can kind of see, like, the evidence of it where like, he's very careful to, like, make sure that if people aren't touching his hands, they only have, like, points of contact with his body at one point so that his fourth hand can cover it, like, that kind of thing. He's very careful about it. Does he have, like, bad video game movement things where as he's walking, his feet kind of actually, glide a little bit as he's Generally, walking? no. He's actually pretty good about it and because he's been doing this for years, presumably. So uh, okay. you get the vibe that, like, the reason that he clipped through before was because he was very flustered and just booking it as fast as he could. It made him careless, which, was the, which I, as the DM, right. I will tell you, that was the only reason he messed up. He's very good at keeping this right. illusion okay. up otherwise because, again, he's been doing it for a very long time in, like, combat situations, too. So just, like, walking through the city, he's right. fine. Uh, so after, uh, you know, a, a little bit of walking, it's not immediately close, but this is all relatively near the city center, so it's it's fairly similar. Uh, surrounded by several other arenas and sports fields and things like that, there is a large building that is a temple. Uh, there are a lot of people, again, outside of the temple, presumably still setting up stuff for the uh, <laughs> festival tomorrow. Uh, but there's not a lot of people in there. Uh, again, probably you assume it will be more crowded over the course of the festival, and so there's not a lot of people there the day before. Uh, but, you know, Dramaticus kind of leads you in. In the inside, it seems like a fairly normal temple. In the, center, uh, in the center, there is a statue, a very large statue of a man wearing, like, very large, very complex-looking ceremonial armor carrying a big spear. Like, very stereotypical, like, Think like extra fancy Roman centurion. This seems to be whoever the temple was dedicated gotcha. to. Uh, Dramaticus kind of gestures inward. Doesn't say anything. I mean, if you ask him questions, he might answer, but like, takes you in. Okay. Uh, Blob, you getting a vibe from this place? Uh, Blob, kind of, uh, kind of, you know, 
floats out. A couple people, the few people that are in there, give sort of sideways glances, but, like, don't do anything about it. Uh, Blub kind of scans around, scans the statue, uh, stands, uh, scans the statue, kind of flips back and goes, there's something here, for sure. I I'm not entirely sure. It's, it's, uh, there's, there's a higher spike in energy, but it's not, not recent. It's decayed, if that makes any sense. Can I, can I scan outside? It's, I'll do, a I'll be subtle. Oh, yeah. No, do, do what you gotta do. Uh, Blob kind of floats out. Uh, and as he does, Dramaticus pipes up. And he goes, if you're, uh, So you're looking for energy that's related to gods, then? Essentially, uh, yeah. Your little friend said it was decayed. Uh, Vasilios, he gestures to the statue. Uh, Vasilios has not appeared here in a while. Could that possibly like a century or so. Could that be why? Oh, maybe he's dead. Uh, Glib or Blob kind of returns after a couple moments, and sort of says, "He's like, yeah, the the energy is it, it's it's larger in the city. It seems I, I couldn't find like any direct godly source, but I don't know. The, there are many people setting up like little shrines and ceremonies and things, like they're sort of amplifying the the latent energy that's mm. present here." Hmm. Okay. All right. So it, this is kind of the source then. Because everyone the else is amplifying city. it. Yeah. Amplifying their god. Yeah. The shrine. This, uh, right. Remember, Prophet said that it's possible that uh, they, they haven't scanned for this energy before. Uh, it's entirely possible that it could have been a natural source. And from looking at this, yeah, it seems like Vasilios, whoever this, this god of victory was, uh, that, you know, the the worship and, like, the, the thought of these people is... You know, they're replicating the energy that comes from Vasilia, but there's not anyone actively here at the moment, it seems. Can I try something? It. I want to walk up to the statue of the guy and then try and call my god. Like, put my hand on it and then try oh, and, like, interesting. reach uh, out. Okay, let me think exactly how that would work. Um, ooh, okay. There's some interactions here that I'm trying to think. Uh... I mean, you know, this is actually that. Let's see. Touching the statue and sort of trying to try... You touch the statue, and you do the same sort of method that you've used to reach out to gods before. Uh, yeah. Not, you know, you, not in the... Not trying to reach out to this god specifically, but just sort of opening your mind to receiving something. And yeah. it takes a second... But you feel like a like a shock, like a spark of feedback. That kind of is painful. Okay. So it jumps you back a little bit. Yeah, just... Ah, damn it. Was that good sign or bad sign? Something hurt. I tried to call him and something hurt. <laughs> um, I'm going to try it again and see if it, if I can take it now that I know it's there. So put my hand back on it, reach back out again. Uh, you get sort of the same, like it's a calling this being whatever, whatever Vasilios is or whatever energy is here. It's not great for you. It, it is painful. You don't really get a lot of energy from it. I mean, it's just, it's not great. You don't get anything okay. beyond. So it, yes, hurts it hurts to, to do. do. And I will, I will say, let's okay. say, you know, there's a difference between like pain and damage. It does not damage your body in any way. It's just unpleasant. There's no la the pain fades yeah. shortly after, but hmm. yeah. Uh, can I like try talking to it now that I'm connected? Like it hurts, but can I like try and like hold on to the to the, to the connection? A you little can bit? try. You don't really get. You, uh, it doesn't seem like there's really a connection open. It seems like whatever is causing this connection is not compatible with you in some some capacity. Okay. Hmm. Something, something's going on. I can get something, but it's not. It's like the connection is is being cut off by something. And I will tell you, as the DM, there are like, this is not just me saying you cannot communicate with this god because I don't want you to. Yet there are right. reasons yeah. why this is happening, and you can figure those reasons out. All right. Um, hey, can I try calling my god without touching it and see if I get a similar response? Uh, you try calling your. I mean, you call your god. The line, you know, to metaphorically, the line is dead. Yeah, you, you dead. sort of open your mind. Nothing, yeah. you don't get any response. 
Uh, nothing has changed. The line is okay. the line is dead. Okay, so there's nothing on the other end, but in difference, the other one I guess I was about to say yeah, pain like from trying to call it. It's it's something happens. Something happens when you try to make contact through the statue of Vasilios. Can I turn back to uh to Dramaticus and be like, is there like a prayer ritual to this guy? His uh. To be entirely honest, I've uh, never really worried about... Oh, I forget. He should be doing his voice. He's in public. So, to be entirely honest, I've uh, never really thought much about it. I've, uh... He kind of leans in. He goes, even my situation, I've never really been concerned with all of that. I didn't know if it applied to me. Uh, but I'm... I'm. Sh- <laughs> That's a good point. Hey! And can I reach out into the... Can I, like, completely ignore Dramaticus? <laughs> like, I'm using him because he's here and just... Like great, that's awesome. Hey, and like yell out to see if there's any preachers in the uh, in the temple. I mean, yeah, there there are priests around that you can flag down. That uh, priest, you, dude, Rose, yeah, uh, uh, come uh, here. Man comes over while in while you know a priest and dressed in sort of priestly garb. You can also tell that like sort of think sort of like a like Shaolin mode. Like there's a they're a priest, but they're very athletic, as you'd kind of expect from like a priest of a victory god. They're, you know, right. There's a huh. how can I help? Yeah. Wow, you are surprisingly you. big. Um, anyway, is there any ritual or such to be able to to pray to uh, Vasilius Victorious or whatever the fuck uh, his name is? Vasilios. Vasilios. I'll, ty- I'll type it in chat if anyone's curious. Uh, it's a Thank it's you. a complicated name. No, that's not me saying that. That's oh, saying yeah, no, no, no. I, I was saying for that's... anyone who's curious, I'm just typing it in chat regardless. It's that. Yeah, I just picked a fancy sounding Greek name that also started with a V. Uh, but uh, yes, yeah, the the priest happy to you know spread the the word kind of like shows you a, a simple ritual nothing nothing crazy i don't feel like describing a whole prayer ritual but you get the idea he, <laughs> he shows you something that you need to do or not need okay to do, but, yeah. can i do mm-hmm. right can i do that and then try and reach uh, out yeah so you you perform the ritual as the actually make a religion check to see how effectively okay. you can religion. do it i, that's I, a, I think that's that. the first one of those in the campaign well, in this uh, campaign, you... definitely, but you know, in season one, it's well. Oh, for sure. Oh, fuck. Oh, damn. Six. Damn yeah, it. You don't. You have the exact same reaction of the, 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 you know, the little spark of pain, but you don't know if that's because you did it wrong or not. Also, the wow, as you did the ritual wrong, the camera messed up for the first time this entire session. It just went back though, so we're good. <laughs> oh, now it's back again. Okay, you know what? I'm just not going to touch it, and then it's going to hopefully fix itself. Uh, anyway, so yeah, again, you get the exact same reaction, but you can't tell if it's because you did it wrong or. Interesting. I wonder if uh, I wonder right. if our friend here, who possibly may, might not get shocked because of reasons, could do the ritual, and it should work. Uh, so the, uh, Dramaticus does the ritual as well. It doesn't seem like it's the first time he's done it. Uh, Mm. but you know, touches the statue at the end. Doesn't really seem to have any sort of reaction. It kind of just touches the statue. No pain, but also no major insight. Just kind of what would happen, you know, what you expect from someone touching a random statue. It's nothing really much. If I do it, do I get shocked? Are you doing it as well? Yes. Uh, now when SG does it. Uh, something definitely, uh, something different definitely happens. SG performs sort of the same ritual, and when you touch the statue, uh, a heat spreads through your body. Not unpleasant, like a, like a warmth, but, you know, that is, it's definitely some sort of more intentional connection that has happened. It feels all warm and comfortable. Like, I could take nap. Hmm. What? It feels. What the fuck do you mean? I almost I got hurt every time I did that shit. I mean, it, it could be, be because, because you, you are water. You have a, ooh, or maybe you already you still have some sort of connection with your god already. Even though he's you're getting there. Dead. One of one of you is getting there. Dead. One um, or both of you actually. Both of you are kind of getting there. Couldn't you try talking to the dude? Um, hello, Vis- Vasilios. Is are you there? Uh, you don't get any active response. There doesn't really see. Um, how do I say this? Actually, roll, roll, Arcana or Insight, whichever is higher, which I believe for you is Insight. 
probably insight. Yeah. Just slightly higher. Um, that's like a 14. A 14 is solid. This was not a complicated DC, especially with your, you know, with your psychic abilities. With your psychic abilities, you're very familiar with like what a mind kind of feels like to connect with. There doesn't seem to be any like active presence on the other side of what this is. Just sort of an energy. Uh, this is definitely connected to some sort of primordial energy that was possibly there in the past. Um, but whatever or wherever Vasilios is or was, he's not here now. Can I ask it to show me where I could find it? Uh, you can ask. You don't get an active... Well, hmm. Let me think about how it would respond to that. Uh, no, because no... Okay. Uh, yeah. No, there is no, uh... Well, I'm trying to figure out exactly what that would be. Because I think if the, that thing's there... No, I don't think you actually get any response from that. All right. I'm going to assume it can answer yes, no questions. Is that right? I'm not going to tell you. Again, you have gotten <laughs> okay. very close to figuring out one aspect of this. Which is at least why Are Glib you... is not great at touching it. Hmm. Are you alive? If you, if yes, get okay. very hot. If no, cool down. Let me rephrase what I said earlier about what you're feeling. It does not yeah. feel like you like there is a presence or being mm -hmm. on the other side. It feels like you are tapping into an energy source. It does not okay. seem sentient. It is like just you are tapping into some sort are of Are you tapping into just some throne? sort of residual energy? I think you might be tapping into the throne, like the 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 seat that the god sits on, and not the actual god himself. The throne of fire and glitter. Victory. Oh, is victory hell his yeah. own throne? I don't think the victory. He's the god of and, victory. And motherfucking Glib always loses. Oh. And that's why. I mean, like, if it's the oh, god of God. Love, okay, I'm gonna say, like I'm gonna say something. Person. That's actually, that's good, and it works out nicely. That is not actually what I had in mind. You were, you were closer <laughs> before. There's something that, that. Is it the I'm, fire god? I'm is, guessing it's a fire, fire versus water, or victory versus losing. Uh, I might have missed it. Did we say he was a fire god? So, roll. Uh, let me try to think of what's. I, I'm not going to tell you that yet. You're going to have to figure out some more things to, to before you know exactly what happens with that. Matt, this is a party of goobers. We can't do it. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not saying you have to have it now. I'm saying this is the first of a couple clues that you have discovered here. Uh, but I will say what, from the energy that you are gathering, some sort of connection to at least the, the realm and or throne of fire does seem to make sense with and glib sort of as someone proposes that i just unplugged my headset by accident uh as someone proposes that like you can kind of tell like that the feeling did seem like one of incompatibility which would make sense if it was some sort okay. of opposite you know opposing force gotcha. if i charged right. it with scorching ray would that help Oh my god, we're in a temple. If you want a scorching ray you the statue, I don't the I I'll tell you, I do not have anything planned for if you scorching ray the statue, but that might do something. I'll just be improvising it on the fly. We are in a very public space and you are about to laser a statue. Just think about this first. I mean, if it's the god of fire, it shouldn't be they should, wouldn't make anything flammable, am I right? He's the god of victory, if I remember correctly in the realm of fire then they should definitely fireproof statue one <laughs> scorching ray uh you fire oh, okay God. so you fire <laughs> scorching ray at the statue uh everyone in the temple kind of looks looks very surprised at that uh but you know what i'm gonna give this to you uh the scorch because the scorching ray idea is clever so out of curiosity where are you striking the statue um how, what does the statue look like? Is there like uh, it seems to obviously be a, like a staff or something? Yeah, it's a, it's a humanoid in like very elaborate ceremonial like centurion armor holding like a big spear. I guess I would do it at like the top of the spear where it would stab someone. Okay, so at the like point... that it could almost be like a like a torch. That's interesting. Okay, so you uh, you fired at the point of the spear. Uh, yeah, 
If we end up going into a fight, I just want to remind everybody that every priest in here is Jack. Uh, so, yeah, you are. This is the the buff priest temple, but you fire the scorching ray at the speed. Uh, everyone kind of looks surprised. The priests there do sort of like get into a fighting stance. Uh, even even Dramaticus is kind of like, "What are you doing?" and gets ready to to punch somebody, though it's not really you know sure who yet. Uh, however, the statue does not take any damage. Rather, it starts glowing. Uh, and as it starts glowing, the statue begins to move. Uh, the sp- might the be sphere no. kind of very slowly what? sort of rears back. And then suddenly, with a lot of speed, slams into the ground in the center of all of you in a <laughs> burst of flame. Uh, and when the flame subsides, you find yourself in the plane of fire. And oh, I think shit. at that oh, point, that is a dang. great ending to the first session of season two. God Force, <laughs> you guys are now in the plane of fire, gonna figure out what Vasilios's deal is. First quest oh, well God. underway. Dramaticus has been discovered and found out, and I guess kind of befriended. Mysteries are continuing. Gonna be a good time. Yay! Yeah! Like I said, Woo! I wasn't kidding when I said yeah, the world building was, there was going to be a lot more world building in this session, and there's so many more things you got to explore. It's going to be very fun. I like yeah, it. Cool. There's, yeah, there's so much more. I have uh, I have in, in one quest, and I'm not even going to tell you if this is like a quest arc that you've seen or not yet, uh, my favorite bosses that I have ever come up with in a campaign, they're terrifying, and I love them. Uh, but yeah, I'm not gonna say anything about that yet. You got a, a ways to go before you you meet those those friendly guys. I really want to take Dramaticus to his dad and be like, "Hey, reconcile so you can get a hey, new body." Hey, he's with you. I mean, he's with you. So, oh, Dramaticus, the wooden puppet in the realm of fire. Yeah, he's not gonna be too happy about that. Now, uh, well, I'll, I'll I'll talk about where exactly you ended up uh, ended up next week. But yes. I've also wanted to ask, is is Dramaticus like Uncanny Valley? Like did like the fact that he is not not the literal place yeah. in Uncanny Valley in in the in the, castle, the story, the but like is he pretty enough and buff enough and big enough that it's very much like you, you know, feel I weird get, to look I at. I get what you're saying. Right? I'm going to say no. Uh he's he's you know, within reasonable like like the top end of reasonable. Like, if you thought about it for a bit, you'd be like, it's weird that this professional fighter, like, doesn't have any scars or marks or anything. But, like... Is it kind of like, um, like how Yennefer is described in The Witcher? Like, if you start looking too hard, your brain starts to go, something I'll, seems I'll a little off here. Fine. I'll say that's fine. Yeah. Okay. All right. But, you know, he's he's not, not creepy looking. Uh, again, like Dramaticus is an actor. Gotcha. That's dramatic. That's uh, I was if people were comparing him to All Might. I would say that's from what I know of All Might, which is not that much. That is that's a big difference. Is like Dramaticus, while he's a fighter, he is also an actor. Like that's what he was made for. Okay. Uh, so that's you know gotcha. that's hence the name. I took. I remember I was telling. I don't remember if it was you guys or somebody else. I told. I was like I named the character Dramaticus, but like there's actually reason for it, and it's because he was made to be like an actor and like a puppet in a show. So yeah. there's a reason. Uh, but yeah, I'm glad that uh. Again, Momo saying that specific line, literally the most, I've said it so many times, literally the most perfect Genius. thing that she possibly could have said. Like that was, you, you guys get why I had the reaction that I did right now, right? Because she hit yeah, multiple yeah, yeah. points of his whole secret thing. Uh, but yeah. It's like, he's like, you mean you tell me you were just joking? Like, yeah, I was just joshing just you right messing there. messing around. You just came up with that on the fucking fly? Just messing around. Uh, but yeah. Lots of things to discover. Next week, we will start off in the realm of fire, maybe see a, a throne for the first time in this season, figure out what's going on with the God of Victory. Going to be a good time, and we will continue the quest lines, and I'm excited to see what else you guys find out. Uh, anyone have anything to plug? As usual, I will uh, end off with that. I just wanted to say that, once again, <laughs> SG just bullshitting until it becomes canon. Yeah. Uh, there is actually there's a there's a canon thing that I've been waiting to drop and I will eventually. 
we're getting close to a thing that I'll be able to, but it's a stupid, a stupid, I'll go ahead and say it's a stupid reference that is, I think, for Nathan specifically, but he'll find it funny. So more, more stupid <laughs> jokes incoming. Uh, but yeah, I do have a little thing to plug. Uh, I've been plugging this for a while, but I'm going to say it again. I wrote a book. I wrote a comic book. It's called Power Play. It's just a little like $4 one shot on Amazon. Physical copies will be coming soon. My big project was getting season two of Symmetry War launched. And then after that, it was getting physical copies of the book. So that's like what my next big thing is. Uh, but it is available digitally on Amazon. I have just dropped the link in the chat. Uh, the only other thing, I also do other things on this Twitch channel. I play various video games multiple times a week. So if you want to watch me do more stuff, you can follow me here. Uh, everyone else is on TikTok. Everyone else is on Discord. Uh, the TikTok mm -hmm. names are on the screen here. Discord links have been dropped in chat. Uh, and on that note, that should be everything. So thank you, everybody, for watching. I hope you enjoyed the first episode of Season 2. And we will see you all Friday, 6 p.m. Central Time next week. Thanks for coming.